What's happening, weirdos? This is a long-anticipated episode on my part. This is Zach Levi, who is hilarious and talented, and you are about to hear deeply, deeply brilliant. He and I have been messaging since pre-pan. I think it was, it's was. it been since pre-pan for him to come on the show, uh, and I'm so glad we waited to do it in person. If you're watching this on YouTube, you'll see we got cozy on the couch, we had a blast, and it was nonstop. In meaning brilliant, interesting, funny. I told him afterwards it was like a day off for me. I just got to listen and absorb his his genius and his uh, his uh, humor. I'm going to say his humor. So it's a really, really fun chat. If you don't know Zach, he's from the show Chuck. He was Chuck on Chuck. He was Chuck on Chuck and uh, in Shazam. And they're doing a new Shazam, the great comic book that made a great movie, Shazam. Uh, and he is incredible in that. He's also, for those of you that have children or just love uh, Disney movies, he's uh, in uh, Tangled. <laughs> I hear his voice a lot in the house when Leela is watching Tangled. So let's get to it as quickly as possible. For those of you watching this, I, I am in a hotel. I'm shooting something, so I stole a little time here to do this intro for you guys, but we recorded this episode a couple weeks ago, so it's in the good old usual spot. Just a few things to plug up top. Go to PeteHolmes.com if you'd like to see me. I'm going to be in San Francisco, Portland, Seattle, Atlanta, Charlotte, and Washington. We're going to be adding new dates, uh, Vancouver, I believe, and a few other places coming up. All of those tickets will be on PeteHolmes.com. Uh, thank you to everybody who came out to Largo on Tuesday. We do a show in the Los Angeles, in Los Angeles, not the Los Angeles area, in Los Angeles. Go to Largo-LA.com and you will see Pete Holmes living at Largo. We do it once a month. It's always incredible. Whitmer Thomas, Rory Scovel, uh, Judd Apatow, incredible people are constantly doing it. Sandler, Adam Sandler, Silverman, Sarah Silverman, just great people. It's, it's always the highlight of my month. Val and I always make a date of it, and uh, we love it. So if you want to see that, go to Largo-LA.com. And if you like this show, the best way to support it is to try a Pete's Pick. Pete's Picks are, are ads, but they are called Pete's Picks because they are actually things that I actually use and I actually love, like our friends at Living Libations. Living Libations is a beautiful and natural, I'm going to say high-end, meaning high-quality, not high-priced, but high-end, high-quality uh, skin care, hair care, uh, oral care, dental care, gums, teeth, all that stuff. If you have something on your body, living libations, if you have something on your body, if you have a body, that's better. Living libations has a natural alternative to the random chemical nightmares that honestly for years I was putting all over my skin, putting into my body just because I didn't know any better about health, beauty, and skin care. But Living Libations makes not only incredible and effective exfoliants, moisturizers, obviously you guys know I use their uh, Zen Shave for shaving cream. They work wonderfully, but you can look at the ingredients and you actually will recognize them. There's no numbers like 72 dye number 8B46. You don't need the periodic table of the elements to understand what's in it. You'll recognize the ingredients and they are incredible, incredible products. We are a top to bottom living libations household, especially if you have kids. We put uh, the Love the Sun zinc based skin uh, uh, sun care on Leela or when she's going out to school. It's wonderful to have sun protection that we know is actually not filled with chemicals that are terrible for you. And at night, both Val and I use their uh, best skin ever uh, moisturizer, which gets your skin looking great feeling great, wonderful way to end the day before bed. But this is a great way to support the show. Whatever your skin needs, your face, your body, your eyes, your teeth, babies, children, 
Living Libations has a premium, natural, and wonderful product to replace whatever you might just be buying at the pharmacy that honestly is filled with stuff that is toxic and not intended for humans. So do your skin a favor and support the show. Go to livinglibations.com and use promo code Gratitude Weird, and you will get 15% off everything you see there. Also, from our friends at Alpha Brain and on it, Alpha Brain is a nootropic. I swear by it. I've taken it every day, two or three pills a day for the past six, seven, eight years now. It is a huge secret weapon. If you do anything that involves cognition, involves creativity, involves memory, focus, if you're in school, if you work hard with your brain, or if you are in a creative field, Alpha Brain is a huge, huge, huge game changer for me. I'm shooting something right now, and when it comes to uh, memorizing lines, Alpha Brain is a huge, huge help getting that information in there. It is earth-grown ingredients, as I always mention. It is not a stimulant. It's not like caffeine. It doesn't get you up. It just gives your brain the nutrition that it needs to focus and for recall, and in my case, for creativity. For years, I haven't done a podcast, written a script, done stand-up, or shot something like I'm shooting uh, this week without taking some alpha brain just to give my brain everything it needs to perform at its absolute best. If you like it one-tenth as much as I like it, it's going to change your life. I always have it in my car, in my travel bag, like I'm traveling now, in the pockets of my coats. It's it's always with me because I absolutely, absolutely swear by it. You will notice the difference. And if you want to give it a try, best way to know if you like it, go to onnit, O-N-N-I-T dot com slash weird. You'll get 10% off everything you see on that page. All right, everybody, enjoy this chat with Zach Levi. What a treat it was. Get into it. Keep it on. We, it'll be it'll be a mid conversation <laughs> beginning. <laughs> man. It'll be look what, at you, what you with, mean? The, with the intellectually graying sides. I love. Oh man, I'm just getting. No, no, no. This is real. Just, oh, it's oh I'm yeah. Like, nice. Oh no, I'm I'm down for my salt and pepper. I'm that's I'm, what I'm saying. I'm into it. Yeah, I'm not like. What kind of dick would be like, welcome to my podcast? Are you aging? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna kick my shit. Yeah, kick it off. You, you no like one does. On the big couch here. I was gonna say, no one does, but you can mirror oh, what I'm doing. Totally get into this. And I'm gonna do how am I kicking my shoes on my feet up anyway? Right? Well you're you're how tall are you? Six four. Yeah, this is your couch. We're tall guys. This is called a they are not a sponsor. Crate and Barrel Ver- Verano. Crate and, barrel, a crate and Barrel Verano. Verano, which sounds like a car. A little bit. A Verano we, sounds a bit like yeah, a car. I have a Verano. And then you sit on the couch and it doesn't go anywhere. No. It gets zero miles to the gallon. Zero miles to the gallon. But yeah. she's a beast, though. Look she's a beast. Her. Deep seated. Deep seated. Yeah, it's, it's, I, like I, like um, I like a good deep couch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because our legs are long. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Also, I feel like a couch should always double as a good bed. Buddy, always had I that ch- famous comedian troubled marriage. <laughs> I've, I have slept on this couch just as it, because it's great. How long have you had this couch? This is I've had this this okay. So this is the Gosling. Okay, uh, <laughs> that'll give you an idea of how long I've had this couch because they're together. Well, that's it, the it Gosling was like, from Driver. You from Drive? You had oh, from, from Drive. From he drive. is the driver. He is the driver in Drive, but he's not Baby Driver. No, in totally fact, if, movie. if you like me went to see Baby Driver thinking it was going to be like Drive, not at all. You're going to walk out completely different. I did walk out. You walked out of Baby Driver. Does that make me like? I feel like you, you can't say that. No, I don't know. <laughs> no, like, I mean, I mean, you like, can say you can say whatever you want. It's your podcast. What's a movie you walked out of? Give me one. Must love dogs. That's a great example, but no one's going to disagree with that. Yeah. Uh, Sonic. No, we stayed. Sonic <laughs> Two, but my daughter wanted to leave. <laughs> well. Did she really? Yeah, yeah. So suck it, Ben. Ben Ben Schwartz is the voice of. Ben Schwartz is the voice of Sonic? Yeah, you didn't oh, know. Oh, I did not know that. I assumed. No. You know, you're in our house constant. Because of Tangled? Yeah, buddy. Win. It's awesome. And can I say? I'm going to say. Say touch, it. Touch, say gen- it. Give gentle me, give touch. Give me a little toe touch. Gentle touch. Toe pick. Gentle touch. What a great performance. Thanks, Ben. As a, as a, as a, as a voice, as a voice actor. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter that it's Disney, meaning it doesn't save it that it's Disney. It doesn't guarantee no, that no. the performance is going to be great. No. They have a very good batting average, but there's a few Disneys because I watch them all the time where yeah. I'm like, it couldn't be more obvious that they're not together. It couldn't be more obvious that it's like yeah. just kind of reading off of a page. 
and you bring uh, that 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 man to life. Thanks, man. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, look, that that's a testament to our writer, our directors, like, but particularly the directors and the producer who they're there every session. They're there every session, yeah. and so they're really guiding you through. You know, like, because you are all you are all always recording it separately. So right. Unless you're not fantastic, Mr. Fox, and did you they all can do that tell. together? Not only did they do it together, they did it outside. So if they're outside, they're outside. Wait, what? And you can tell. You can tell. And was it, uh, Bob's Burgers records Ensemble. 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 <laughs> Actually, I think there's a few. I feel like I've heard like even um, like Family Guy will sometimes or The Simpsons will sometimes. For the pri- yeah, The so, Simpsons does as well. Yeah, yeah. For the primaries. And then uh, yeah. like you'll, uh, this is no shots fired to Hank Azaria, but when I did The Simpsons, he wasn't there, but then he drops in like yeah. wherever he is yeah, yeah. living that I'm every character on The Simpsons Bro. life. I mean, and what a great, what a great gig. It's a great what gig. What a great gig to have been one of those lucky yeah, early. actors early on on yes. The Simpsons or yes. Family Guy. Family Guy, they, those guys get paid pretty good too. But yes, to just like bring these iconic characters to life, but also, you know, a lot of them have their own setups at their house where they can just like yeah, record right. whatever they That's want, what I'm whenever they want. Yes. Hank is stirring an Arnold Palm, a pitcher of Arnold Palmer's <laughs> with a wooden spoon. And then he goes, I got to go be Mo. Yeah. <laughs> Let me go be Mo real quick. Yeah. <laughs> but not a back. poo. Not, a, no, not anymore. No more poo. No more. No more poo. Get no, it. That's okay. Hashtag. It is. We get it. It is what it is. Foot five. <laughs> Foot five. I'm here we're, to protect. We're diving right in. <laughs> I'm we're here to right protect in. your reputation. You are woke. Uh, actually, I hate that I said that because I do a lot of podcasts well, recently, yeah. where like I was like the joke is the woke person, like and and comedians are supposed to be like not woke. I don't even like yeah. the term. Woke. I don't know. I Sensitive, think, yeah. Uh, think, considerate, yeah. I think. Look, those are great operative words. Woke I, just sounds like a joke. Now. Woke is a joke. Yeah, woke's a joke. Yeah, but considerate is always in fashion. You consider <laughs> it certainly should be. It's it, it, it gets a conversation going. But I do, yeah, I do, I do wonder if you know, like with a lot of things, you know, something may have started with like a good intention, but then it like runs, yeah, rampant and a muck and crazy, and it kind of becomes almost like. A caricature of itself. Sure. And with wokeness, I feel like it definitely has kind of done that. You yes, know, I prefer sure. the term awake. Meaning any, I, I would say awake is nice. I like being awake. I would say anything that people are doing yeah. is going to get goofy. Yeah. Because for people. Because, because people, people are goofy. Because people be goofy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So yes. I, I, but but I actually, as my guest, it's super important that you know. Because I haven't, I've done shows recently where I was like, is, is like the joke that I'm uncomfortable? That's not this show. Yeah, there you go. I'm gonna take that with me. You may. Do you want to? I'm gonna take that. What, what would you do with that? What would you do? Pete Holmes show. Would, you can have a mug. Pillow. You can have a mug. You Those are the mugs, mugs too? from the show. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what were we saying? The couch. I don't know. Who cares? Being, uh, being, Tall. you know, enlightened, awake, being uh, awake people. Yeah. Well, you know. you know, it's funny. I didn't know you. You just wrote a book. You, uh, I did. This, this sounds like late night TV. We're still just talking. <laughs> if you want another foot high five <laughs> to demonstrate how not locked into this no, conversation, man. I this am. is why I like podcasts so much. Is because they are the antithesis to late night TV. Which That's right. I have been fortunate to have this incredible career of mine and have been fortunate to do late night television to promote yeah. said career. But I have always had a really hard time with it because it's just so canned. It's all yeah. so canned. Like yeah. particularly the pre-interview. Yeah. I despise it because it's it, I just want to be an authentic person having an authentic yeah. conversation. Yeah. And when you, you know, for anybody who's listening to this, if you don't already know this, every single time somebody goes on a late night talk show, you you're, have this you're pre-interview. Breaking a lot of hearts. You're breaking a lot of hearts with, right now. With a, with a producing, with a segment producer. Yes. Because every late night talk show has various segments and every one of those segments has a producer. Yes. Meaning every guest has a producer. And, you know, we'll have, and and that will be the authentic conversation. It's like totally chill. They're like, how was your summer? You know, what's going on? You have all these great, com- this great you little- You just made me realize that's the authentic, that's, that's the podcast. That is the podcast. You you're, you and the producer yeah. shoot the shit. You shoot the shit and you and, talk about life. And, and they get you into a great area, yep. but they got you there organically. And exactly. then unfortunately on the late night show, then they're just going to yeah. go, so I understand you had a thing with us squirrel recently, yeah right yeah. and you're like ah oh, fuck well but here but but the, but my problem even with that though like i'll show up to late night shows and they say so let's go over what you're going to talk about and i always say no please don't yeah i would rather we've already we've already 
destroyed the the uh, the um, the, the spon spontaneity of it. Okay, yeah, I was going more of a metaphor for song. <laughs> We've destroyed the song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yes, the the song of it, the cadence of it, the yeah. the authenticity of it. You know the. The spontaneity of it, we we already know we're, we're we're breaking that up. So at the very least, please don't tell me which of these anecdotes we're going to talk about. Let them happen organically yeah. in the oh. moment. But then the problem is that because I don't like going over that in like you know the dressing room prior to the interview, then I'm not really prepared to do that. But ump bump with the host who's expecting me to answer it in an exact specific way. And, and, sometimes and so the, then the joke can be flat. Yeah. And then they, and then they don't want me back on their show. Oh, I, <laughs> I don't know. I doubt that very yeah. much. But yeah, having hosted a, a late night show, sometimes we want you to stick a landing and that's when we know we're going to commercial break. I know. But on our show, uh, not to toot my own horn, you have a lot of freedom if no one's watching. And that's real. Like some of these things are victims of their own success. Sure. It's, it's like we, we have to get these in because Beyonce's playing a song. Like yeah, on yeah. our show, we had nowhere to go and nothing to do. So this would be the talk show. But I feel like organic conversation, if you have, and this is also kind of what boggles my mind, if you have a talented, funny, charismatic host, which basically all of these late night shows have. Yes. Why not just be that? Just do that. Just have a conversation. Because they're road hypnotized. They're doing too many. That that's true. There, there is that. And there also, is that. But, but that's the fucking job, man. Like that's the job. I it understand. Feels like, but I feel like Johnny Carson, or like even before Johnny, who was um, or not before Johnny, but like concurrent with Johnny. What, what was that guy's name? He, he was he was a little. He wasn't late night. Um, I'm bad at this. I'm so bad at it's this. It's the name of Ed, Ed Sullivan. Dick, no, uh, not Ed Sullivan. <laughs> Is uh, who is Ed Sullivan? No, um, no, Dick, mm, Dick, 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 no, Dick, no, gosh dang it, he had like that, Dick. he would have that, that, he would have a sit down, it was like two chairs and a little table between them. I know who you mean, he's blonde, kind of, yes, he's a kind of handsome you don't really see on kind TV of, anymore, but he, but <laughs> he would have like all these incredible guests, I know on, who you mean, and they would just have conversations, yes, and even on, even and this on, is where you'd see like James Baldwin go off sure, for 15 exactly. minutes. Exactly. This is exactly yeah, what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then even, by the way, even on Johnny Carson, even on, even with Johnny Carson. Even more purged. The, oh, yeah. Well, you yeah, look like Ben Affleck in Reindeer Games. Um, <laughs> <laughs> who, who, wow, that's who, a Paul. Who falls Reindeer Games? <laughs> that's a Paul. Yeah, yeah. Um, but even Carson, I mean, I'm sure they had some for, for, form or version of, of the pre-interview, but you can tell from the interviews, this is, I think, what, what the real kind of problem with, late night or whatever it is, which is now it can't, you can't afford for it to not be constant funny. Right. As opposed to, if you go back and watch like classic Carson, it's not jokes the whole time. Can I say something? Yes. Uh, just because I'm agreeing so hard, I'm raising my hand. Yes. Dude, this morning I was watching the pe a Peanuts cartoon, like an old one from yeah. the seventies yeah, yeah. with Leela. And a lot of the, because the, they are little vignettes, they're not sketches, but they're vignettes. Yeah. A lot of them just end, it just fades out. Yeah, it just got. And there's no meaning. There was a time Carson and Peanuts are happening at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Where we didn't have this like bright and tight, tits and teeth. Yeah. Razzle dazzle. Yeah. End on a pop. End on a pop. Yeah. And when even when you're writing for shows or doing TV shows, it's like oh, everything. Yeah. Everything's got to have a act huge outs, blow. Every act out has to have some massive thing. Yes. And there's yeah. no just like even as as recently as like Frasier. Frasier's the last show I know. Cheers certainly did it as well, mm -hmm. where the blow would just be like, and it fades to black. Yeah. It just would. It, yeah. We have no patience for that whatsoever, and it's bleeding into. Again, that's why I like this podcast, and I, I like podcasts in general because we can go places and it goes nowhere. And isn't it yeah. weird that that becomes special? Here, let me stick the landing. It used to be <laughs> a world of meandering nothingness, like going looking for the bathroom in a restaurant and you find a hallway and it just leads to nowhere. It just leads to a wall. Sure, the, That's what life felt like. Yeah. Like, and then you went to TV for, and you, and, and you, it was novel if things were like poppy and, and fresh. Yeah. Now everything's so poppy and fresh, everything, even us on Instagram, that what has become, there's a deficit of is authenticity and now we sell that back to ourselves yeah does that make sense it makes complete sense yeah. listen we, we live in a world of hype i mean it is hype 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 everything's yeah. got to be the biggest and the best guys it's the biggest and the best biggest and the best that's right that's gotta right. have the biggest anytime, and the best. anytime you're listening to anybody <laughs> use those types of words by the way when they're not and there are a few people out there not just trump who 
has that this, wasn't Trump. That, so, that was my Russ Perot. Yeah, sure yeah. it was. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> Russ Perot. Hey, Russ Perot. Oh. Russ Perot is um, Aziz. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Um, but yeah, everything, there's, there, and it's sad because honestly. Because in the best you were saying. The, well, yeah, yeah, but, but, but it's sad because honestly, it wouldn't work if people didn't fall for it. And people fall for it. They fall for it every fucking day. But if we, if we could somehow get people to recognize that they're being lied to. Like yes. this is all just a big sales pitch. All of it is one massive sales pitch. Instead of instead of them recognizing like, yo, authentic people talk authentically and they want to have authentic moments. And with Carson, again, going back to all that stuff, to allow for there to be a conversation, they actually had way more confidence in themselves yeah. as opposed to the bit. Now it's all about the, the bit. bit because the networks and whomever are all afraid. Well, if we don't, if we don't keep people hysterically laughing before the commercial break, then they're, they're going to leave us. Yeah. As opposed yeah. to back in the day when there was only three channels anyway and right. no fucking TiVo, no D DVR. Right. right. And so, what are you going to do? No, you're not. You're going to either stay with Carson or you're not going to stay with Carson. Right. So he didn't have this pressure to be like, make we're, sure we do the. We're and back we'll to my come. show. Yeah. I'm no no shit. The reason why having a talk show on TBS that nobody was watching was great was because it was like that. Yeah. Meaning we could do anything. You could do anything. So Carson used to have like Sammy Davis Jr. would just clearly just walk in because he was shooting on the same lot. Yeah. Like you and you could tell there was no pre-interview and they just fuck around and they're smoking and all yeah. that sort of stuff. And th that was there. But now everything I, you were on a very interesting area there about how everything has been turned into a product and it doesn't work is what you were saying. Bigger yeah. and better doesn't work. I want to put this into your clearly high processing brain. Bring it. Is the idea that humanity doesn't know there's a better uh alternative so what we've settled for is this cat and mouse bait and switch where it's better to live in a world where the next product thing bit of entertainment or manufactured moment that's being sold to us might save us we know it won't but living in the hope yeah. that it might yeah. is better than just this is not true but perceivably waiting around to die that's not true yeah that's not true well, but we'd, we'd rather just stay on the on the treadmill and go oh another thing failed us another thing failed us it, it turns out it wasn't whiter teeth it wasn't sparkling <laughs> floors and it Wait, wasn't it's not whiter teeth and, and like even <laughs> things like cameo have proven that if ben affleck star of reindeer games goes like hey happy birthday julianne even that doesn't work like it, like it's, it's not working it's it's yeah it's it's, it's <laughs> no it's, offense to cameo i'm just saying like no, it doesn't no, matter no, how offend cameo all you want i don't i don't in fact, under i mean well I Actually, I'll, I take that back. Listen, there are you there plug are plenty your cameo? Of, no, not at all. I'm just, no, they, they've they've I, I've done one one session on cameo. I did it for charity once. It was, it was the only way that I was able to kind of really wrap my head around it. Sure, but but, but here's the thing. I also don't want to disparage anybody who is using cameo or oh, like I'm whatever. Not, I'm I, saying I know you're not. I know the you're reason not. I mentioned it was even if the entertainment is directed specifically, specifically to you, yeah. or in the future, let's take cameo out of it. Virtual reality puts you in the movie. Totally. And there you are yeah. in the Shazam. You're, in fact, you are recast by them, JK. Ha, 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 topic. You're recast. <laughs> Hashtag CNN. Uh, but you, you know what I'm saying? I'm not shitting on Cameo. I'm shitting no, on- No, I don't think you are. It doesn't matter no, how you're making, hard show business licks your ass. Yeah, yeah. You're still going to go like, huh. Well, but the, you're, making the, you're making the point, which is, which is that it's all, it's diminishing returns and it's, and and it's the same thing as and you know these studies that have been done, which is you go and buy a new thing, you get a shot of dopamine. Yeah. And by the way, it doesn't matter if you're the uber wealthy guy who bought the Lambo or the person who doesn't have the money and buys the Corolla. Can I tell you something? Preach. So, okay. I just want. I just want to say the preach. Same it's the same shot feeling. of dopamine. Exact and same shot. I'm going to say, and it goes away. Yes. Very very quickly. Much much more quickly than we'd like to realize. And so the cameo where. You are getting your you're a fan. You're getting your ass licked by whomever. Yes, that will hit like that, and, and it'll then go away. It like goes that. away, and then you end up as a consumer, whether it's of content or product or whatever, and you go, "Oh, I'm still not happy," and which this means I need more. Which means I'll fall for the bright shiny packaging yes. more because that feels like it's got more promise to lick my ass more and, we and make me happy. And that feeling is actually what I think, like like rats in a maze. We've been conditioned to like the hope totally. that the next shiny box totally. i'm sort of doing it i've got it I, god forbid I, I i can't i can't fault myself if i am but christmas is coming up and leela's real excited about what's under the tree and aren't i kind of subtly introducing the idea this isn't enough it's what's under the tree yeah. you know it's yeah. just it's just a big part of our our culture but i like what you were saying 
and to get off my guilt for a second. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I <laughs> oh, like we're going to go back to your guilt, oh, motherfucker. Oh, this is a guilt cast. We're going to let you sit in uh, that. Listen. Stew in the guilt. Edit all of this out and then edit it back in, but at half speed, so it <laughs> takes twice as long. <laughs> for you and your daughter. <laughs> what I want to say is I've seen, as I'm sure you've seen, and I actually want you to talk about this if you would, yeah. the Uber, Uber success, the Uber successful people, same... Same problems, different uh, ingredients. Yeah. What I'm saying is, just I, you, this is what you're saying with the Lambo. You either get a Lamborghini and yeah. realize it's not enough, or you get a Corolla and realize it's not enough. Yeah. There's something, talk about what we're, what we're trying to teach Leela. I, I sometimes say to her, I go, baby, when do wants end? I know that's a crazy thing to say to a child. When does it end? You need to notice and recognize now yeah. that it never ends. Yeah. There's a spiritual teacher named Sadhguru who, oh, yeah. quite popular. He has an interesting thing where he goes like, let's say you did rule the world. You rule the world. Everything is yours yeah. and everyone is in your service. Yeah. How long before you go, what about Mars? Yeah. That's just how it yeah. is. Yeah. So the, the trick. Well, why do you think all the fucking kings and empire or emperors and all these people this could not say. stop grabbing more land and more people? They, they can't go there. They can't. Caesar <clears throat> couldn't visit all of his territories. Yeah. It was just a map. No. But, you, you but he got that dopamine. But he got that dopamine he got every single time he got another people group. And, and he had a map and someone had to explain to him, yeah. you now have these people. Yeah. Britain, you now have India. All of it. It's a map. It's a map, and we're map people, and we're pyramid people. Val and I always say we're pyramid people. If you, meaning, if I gave you, Zach, all this power, yeah. eventually you'd build a pyramid. It's just what you'd do. We have no better ideas. I do, You're going to build a pyramid. Although, let's put a pin in pyramids, because I I, I think pyramids are- put a pin in pyramids. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> there's no crying in baseball. Yeah, that, and there's no pin in pyramid. <laughs> no pin. No, I really do. I really do think that, that pyramids, uh, ancient civilizations and all this shit, I watched this- really fascinating uh, docu-series on Netflix called um, Ancient Apocalypse about basically, um, uh, you know, there was this apocalyptic event that happened about 12, 12 and a half thousand years ago. And- I uh, remember. Uh, yeah, I remember. We I were remember. all there. We were all there. Uh, oh, and, um, no. Uh, yes. It's uh, the Younger younger Dryas event is what it is. And it's basically when the earth got in the way of a meteor field and we got pummeled. And that's essentially when the end of the last ice age, uh, the, 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 marked the end of the last ice age. And it happened very rapidly, which is why the entire world flooded. Just like, you know, like Ooh. if you go back and talk about like- Mesopotam. Well, well, you know, Bath like- alone. For sure, but like, all, like not just you know Noah and and the Ark is just the Israelites or the Jewish kind of mythology of that same flood that right. almost every culture in the world has, right. and it all ties back to the same time. And the pyramids all started popping up around then, and they all Wait, by the way right before then you mean no like like post post post, post flood post massive flood almost as if in an attempt to somehow either remember this celestial event. But because if you look at the pyramids, they're all tied up straight to the stars, like their right, their sure. alignments and all those sure. things. But also, there's pyramids all over Latin America. There's pyramids all over um, other places in Europe, Mexico, Mexico. <laughs> uh, and, 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 and that was a all, great C E. Yeah, yeah. It's Me hard to say yes and in Spanish. Yeah. That's a good C E, man. <laughs> Oh my God! Great CE. CE Mexican improvisers. CE. Rule number one: Impro CE. Improvisación. Eh? This is not. <laughs> improvisación. Doesn't sound as good. CE. Don't forget CE. Oh my God. Anyway, yes. Yeah, so we build these pyramids, and we and we do these things, and we want to rule the world, and it's and, and no, at no, the end. Don't of the you dare let CE take you off of it. You're saying they're building them. Oh no, I don't uh, know. To no, to listen, remember, commemorate. It's I thought you were going to say it's high ground to get to. No, no, no. <laughs> it's all these incredible. Again, if you go and watch, you know, the, this docu series is really, really fascinating. And these guys who kind of talk, walk you through it, and there's plenty of archaeological evidence, by the way, that points to so many things that modern day archaeology has basically just kind of turned their eyes from you because got, and you gotta have some they thought they had it all figured out all the yeah. modern like like mainstream archaeologists all you know said oh the pyramids are this old and the sphinx is this old and and that's that we've we've done it it's yeah. settled science or yeah. whatever yeah, yeah, yeah well now new evidence is coming to light but they're all like no 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 this can't be because their entire reputations are based well, on because this. scientists are also pyramid people <laughs> well, they yes. want to be published sure. they want to and, and you can, it's almost unconscious yeah like your desire to be right or whatever yeah. is as much- Why people uh, fall for multi-level multi, multi -level marketing. Uh, which is actually why I brought you here. Yeah. 
I just, I, I just see. That I things, knew you were gonna sell me something. Things have been going well. It's for these a pillows, while. isn't it? It's just like an entire just merch like yes. brand. The original. You're gonna start with pillows, but we're gonna work our way up. <laughs> you say pillows. Pillow. Pillow. Oh, you just pillow. It. Pillow. You did. Say I, I think pillow. I, I think I'm more of a pillow guy. I, I like a P.E. Like I think my yeah. whole life growing up, I pronounce it more pillow. Is that a Lu- Louisiana thing? No, I grew up in Southern California. You b- started in Louisiana. I. I was two. I, I love that he's done Let his, me his, tell his you math, his where research. You started. I was two months old when okay. we left. Yeah. Uh, my dad yeah. just happened to be working there when I popped out. So okay, I just it's on my birth certificate and my driver's license, but I have no real connection to the folks okay. in Lake Charles. And you, know, you don't care for them. Just say it. And I, <laughs> I hear they're honestly, lovely folks. I actually have some friends who live in Lake it. Charles now, but. And I like uh, Louisiana as a state. I think New Orleans is a lot of fun. I've really enjoyed that place. Don't care for it. Uh, really, I'll tell we'll you. We'll come back to that. <laughs> I'm probably going there soon yeah. on tour, so yeah, yeah. I, I, I am kidding. Yeah. But I, I do get scared when, I, when I'm there. I don't like that they're really? like, this hotel's haunted. I'm like, stop it. They're all haunted. Stop it. I don't I, like I, it. Yeah. The, the, the glorification of like the voodoo-y scariness isn't yeah. my favorite. It's, I got you. It's like if I'm going to stay in a, a theme park, it's not the Haunted Mansion. I, I, I'd rather stay in Epcot. I'm an Epcot boy. Wait, you could stay at the Haunted Mansion? No, I, but in this in this flaw, <laughs> you're mixing metaphors here, and I don't know that I appreciate it. Um, but listen, coming full circle all the way back to I want to talk about these meteors. Get, the oh, we can talk about that too. Oh shit, I can go all day about that stuff. But okay. um, look, we, yes, we live in this. Just we live in a we live in this commoditized. We live in this shiny box world of shiny flashy things that we're all now constantly distracted by and all feel like, and while being programmed, you need this, you need this, you need this. And if you finally get it, then you'll be happy and you're not happy. No, but if you get this, you'll be happy. If you get this, you'll be happy. And simultaneously, it's turned us into a disposable society. Everything that we do in our lives is basically everything we buy, everything we watch. It's all this disposable garbage. Speed agree. I mean, it's insane. It's speed, speed, speed and Speed agree. I agree with you quickly. Oh, speed agreed. Like I don't need any more. But I, I, keep I going. thought you said speedy, uh, speedy greed, and I was speedy like, that, and, which is that too? <gasps> it's speedy greed. It's speedy it greed. It's like you know, it's like fast fashion. Yeah. It's insane that you know we talk about the environment, which we need to talk about. We need to talk about ways in which we can protect it. And, pr- and protect ourselves and all the animals and all of the life on this planet, which is really the only fucking miracle, by the way. Everything else is replaceable or reproducible. It's it's life and life itself. This is the only real fucking miracle in this, you know, as Carl Sagan puts out in this little blue dot spinning around in this vastness. And we don't protect it We we because we've all, you know, because industry's all bought and sold and all of our politicians are all fucking bought and sold by the industries through lobbyists and all that shit. You can take that shit to the fucking bank. But <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to take a transcript of this conversation yeah. to a bank and just to have a, a woman I, I named Shelley. He said, take it to the bank. Do you yeah. not give me? Uh, well, um, we'll put it in a safe deposit box. And so, and so all these industries have all run amok and all they care about is bottom lines. It's just shareholders and bottom lines. Right, against and, our own best interest. Against their own best interest because if they actually did give a fuck about their employees and the quality of their product, then they would ultimately make more money and have more loyal customers right. in the long run. Right. But they're all just like, right now, I need it right fucking now. It's right. a speedy greed. Right. We'll sell. Speedy greedy. I'll sell you beef grazed in the rainforest, meaning I'll cut down my yeah. own lungs. Yeah. 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 The, the lungs of the planet. Totally. To sell you beef today and we'll all. Yeah. I'm not, a, I'm not of the opinion that we'll all die tomorrow, but I was thinking today where I was like, there's sort of a narcissism you're probably more informed than I am, to yeah. thinking that we'll destroy the earth. I think it's far more likely that the earth will destroy us. I, I, I agree with this. You know I what I'm saying? With, yeah. I think that the Why earth- isn't that the going theory though? It's like like earthquakes, floods, droughts, all that stuff, will ha- fires will happen. It'll kill us because the earth, like an entity, is like, get these fucking things off of me. Or maybe it's a meteor bath. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I mean, by the way, the chances of us getting hit by another meteor are way higher than people really know. That's one of those things. Like it's like that to, might actually wipe us all out well before the oceans rise. I mean, I'm telling you. But you say that life uh, and the way that life has been going, ancient apocalypse style, yeah. and I don't say this with fear, I say this with delight. Sure. As a member of life, capital L, yeah, yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. Meaning, I used to have a joke where I was like, life will be okay. I don't know if we'll be okay. Yeah. If Zach and Pete will yeah, be. Yeah, in yeah. fact, I can guarantee that Zach and Pete will die. We, we will, will die. Yeah. But life will be okay. And, th- and not to get too ahead of ourselves, that's yeah. who I believe I actually am. I am a member of life. Yeah. Like I am one isolated member of a thing that yes. will be okay. Yes. So in that sense, I can say you will be okay. Yes. But 
I think it's it's even if we the new king and all that stuff, give yeah. it a few billion years, yeah, yeah. life life is not gonna. I I completely agree with you. I I think uh, that doesn't I, mean we shouldn't try. No, no, it doesn't mean we shouldn't try. And but, we should but, try. But, but it is interesting that the the narrative is we're killing the planet when the planet and we're gonna is win. <laughs> way robust. Like yeah. the planet has gone through way way more horrible shit. And, but, but particularly these meteors. Yeah. These meteors are the equivalent of like hundreds and thousands of nuclear explosions. Right. Like the earth- And that's happened before. And that's happened multiple times yeah, before. Yeah, 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 yeah. And life still found a way, right. not to quote you a can. dinosaur movie like Jurassic Park, but uh, life finds a way. And life did find a way. And life that's will a find- a family movie and that life, features And dinosaurs. life will find a way again. I completely agree. <laughs> I think the reason why the narrative is, hey, um, we're killing the planet and we should be worried about that as opposed to, hey, we're killing ourselves, which by the way, some people do say that, but but the overall buddy, narrative, buddy. but I think the reason why, I think I think the reason why, <laughs> I think the reason why is because we don't, we, we have taken on a self-loathing as human beings. Buddy, I just wrote down, we want to die. We, like literally people don't- It's an don't, unconscious desire for annihilation. But it's not even just a desire to want to die. It's it's a loathing of self. And it's and and it's and it, you see it in the way that people don't love each other at all. Yes, the way that we're with the, we are completely polarized or their or their selves for yes. sure but the way that we are polarized we don't we see I mean, the way that a lot of actually environmentalists have heard this argument of like we're a disease humans are a disease we're this parasite the on matrix. the earth it, well, kind of but I, I like to me i go well that's a really i think that's a really horrible way to view humanity and right. not that humanity hasn't done some stupid fucking shit along the way, but we're also pretty amazing. We're this, in, I don't know right. how exactly we evolved into what we are. You can say it was God's touch. You can say it's stoned ape. I think it's probably somewhere in between. Yeah. I do believe in a consciousness and I believe it's guided ape, us. stoned ape, but God was the dealer. What's that? <laughs> stoned ape, but God was the weed dealer. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever, you know, sure. like, like, you know, divinely uh, guided evolution of some kind, whatever yeah, the yeah, fuck it is. Yeah. But we are still, nonetheless, however we got here, we're yeah. these insane animals and creatures. We are, there is no other creature on earth, even very intelligent ones that deal with the level of anxiety and stress and depression and all of the ways we are disconnected from ourselves, each other and, yeah. and the planet. They're all still kind of doing actual life yeah. where they're either in their parasympathetic nervous system and they're chilling and living and eating and shitting and fucking and doing these, whatever these animals, animals do, yeah. animals at, at large. And then we are the only animal that lives now, by the way, now more than ever in the sympathetic nervous system where we are constantly in survival mode. And I think that just has to do with the fact that survival used to be the, the, you know, five like basic pillars of survival. You needed to have food, water, clothing, shelter, and tribe. Those are the only things you even needed to worry about. There were no other worries. Now, granted, some of those things were big worries depending on the season of the year or whatever. Sure. Can we find water? Can we find food? But now we're all, I, these are my theories, but I think we are all constantly jacked into the sympathetic nervous system, our, our survival mode, because survival went from just finding those things to finding one thing, but getting it over and over and over and over and over again, which is money. Money replaced all these other things. Mm. If you just have this one thing, you can buy all those other things. But if you have a little bit more than of that thing, then you can have all this other shit as well. And then I'll be happier going back to exactly what we're talking about. Right. So this pursuit of constant dopamine happiness yes. has made us all slaves to our sympathetic nervous system but in our fight or flight, which makes us all way more unhappy yeah, and I, stuck in the stress and anxiety and depression. I was just going to say that the studies that, that show that the higher your income, the more likely you are to kill yourself. No shit. And, really? and, or, or at least be depressed. Yeah. But certainly that, be depressed. Sure. Yeah, yeah. And suicide goes up. The, the study that I'm specifically referencing is uh, Mexican families that uh, immigrate from Mexico and start sending money back. So same people, they were working in Mexico, then they come to the, the States and start working, making more money, sending it back. Those people are, are like, I'm going to make up this part, but it's like five times more likely to be depressed, five oh, right, times more right, likely right. to kill themselves, right, all right, these right, sorts of right. things. Because it's funny, the more money you have, you just you just said the the central mythology of our, of our culture is you'll be set. Yeah. When really, tribe, if you're depressed, what, where, where was I? Oh, uh, uh, in the movie Stutz. He was like, if you're depressed, even if you go to lunch with someone you don't like, you'll benefit. Yeah. Like any, like we think it has to be like, oh, I, I better get Zach Levi. He, you're clearly a genius and hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I do true, get a lot true. out of this, but I also get a lot of uh, just talking to somebody at yeah. a, a coffee shop. But the more money you have, uh, my YouTube figured out I like 
I used to, I don't do it anymore, but I would watch tours of houses, like a $50 million house. Oh, sure, yeah. Just because- Lifestyles of the rich and famous. Basically, but yeah. now it's a YouTube channel. I don't recommend it. I find it deeply depressing <laughs> because- <laughs> No wonder. Somebody spends $50 million to live in basically a planet yeah. alone. Yeah. And yes. now you're Sam Rockwell yes. in Moon. Yes. And you are- Yes completely cut off. Your food is prepared by somebody who doesn't love you. Yeah. Your lawn is cut by somebody yeah. who doesn't love you. Yeah. Even your friends. Yeah. This is the risk. I, I run as a, as, a, as a very rarefied air comedian person. I run this risk. I am friends with my assistant. I love my assistant, yeah. but I, I have to make sure I can't be Tony Stark. Do you understand? Yeah. The, the, yeah, you I, need I've to have this tribe. Many times. You need yes. community that we are evolutionarily built for it. We are not, human beings are not lone wolves. We we do not yeah. operate in that way. We were never intended to operate in that yeah. way. Yeah, the clue I, is I that believe. we're not wolves. <laughs> no, <laughs> and that's the bottom line. Thanks for tuning in, guys. This Good is my TED Talk. Um, but no, the, you should this, do is, TED talk. this is one of the... I, well, I, I, maybe one day. I don't. I don't know what the fuck I'd talk about, but maybe I'll talk about something one day. I have but a theory. They're all CGI. No <laughs> one's ever given a TED talk. <laughs> it's it's not real. Or they're just really good animatronics. Like yeah. Disney's really outdone himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Hall of Presidents. But but it, it is this. It is this really sad truth, which is, you know, we. It's it's why people who live in rural, you know, tribal peoples in Africa or or Latin America or whatever. Uh, or, or 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 Asia or wherever these rural tribal peoples are that have very little but are so happy. Yeah. Because they mm -hmm. never actually believed or had the opportunity to believe in the, I won't say American it's dream, a myth. the Western dream, which is a myth. The Western it is a, myth. It is a lie from the pit of hell, which is if you live in the right house in the right neighborhood and have the right income and you have the right spouse that has the right job and you have the right amount of kids that go to the right schools and they have the right friends and you have the right amount of cars and toys and all that stuff, then finally you'll be happy. Yeah. And that is a lie from the pit of fucking hell. And we all need to go back to far more minimalistic lives. We yes. do. We need to do that. Ugh. Take our money and Ooh. go build communities. Don't build fucking mansions that separate all of ourselves. Woo. Why do we all need our own pool? We don't. Woo. Why do we all need our own massive backyard? We don't. We can share these grounds. We can share these things and yes. we are happier when we do. My street, five houses, five lawnmowers. What's going on here, yeah. guys? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Five houses, five pools. Yeah. Five houses, uh, 10 cars. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it is true insanity. But there is, there is something to what you're saying, obviously, is that this was manufactured. I don't want to say we're victims of it, but we were inducted into a thought system that we're not aware that we're even adhering to. I, I, think, I think this goes down to everything. I, I, I don't want to be too preachy against alcohol, but there's a lot of things that if you trace it back, you go like, oh, this is just someone selling you something. Yeah. Everything, food, uh, entertainment, yeah. uh, a new idea, uh, a new car, a uh -huh. buzz. Yeah. But like... The genius of it, and I'm just going to put this to you, you old <laughs> jukebox. Come on. The genius of it is that you you uh, sell slavery and you call it freedom. Do you see what I'm saying? I'm going to make you dependent on uh, sugar, alcohol, uh, consumerism, whatever it might be. Mm. And I'm actually going to tell you mm. that your ability to choose the the things I'm selling is your personal freedom. Yeah. Whereas the the opposite is true. Freedom is recognizing that you in this moment, Zach, right now, yeah. assuming we've both had breakfast, we're and that you don't need to use the bathroom or whatever it might be. What what this is the my favorite koan. It's not really a koan. What in this moment is lacking? But you ask people that, they don't they don't get it. No one understands that koan. The truth is nothing. Let me put it this way. Byron Katie in her book says, the thought that kicks you out of heaven. You're sitting on uh, this couch with me. Yeah. You're having a great time. Yeah. And we're and we're safe and we're we're here. Yeah. And we can settle, we have the luxury of settling in to the fact that we are on a pale blue dot and we could be hit by meteors, but we're not being hit by meteors right now and everything's okay. Yeah. The thought that kicks you out of heaven, as she puts it, is be nice if I had a coffee. Right? Yeah. It kicks you out. Yeah, totally. So we've taken that whole thing, yeah. manipulated it, exaggerated it. And then I, but the, do you understand my point that the real devil of it yes. is that I say- We've been programmed you, to believe that we need those things. You needing me is yes. your freedom yes. yeah. If yeah. I tell you to stop drinking, you say, fuck you, this yeah. is America. Yeah. And I go, I, I know how people like alcohol. I enjoyed alcohol for a long time. Please don't think I'm I'm being negative, but you could put in whatever you want there. Listen, uh, New car, uh, sugary snack, 100%. salty snack, 100%. coffee, whatever you want. Yeah. 
but then you go, my freedom is my ability to choose the thing that's being sold to me. Yeah. Fuck you. Freedom is recognizing the the that you don't need those that things you don't need to anything. be happy that you don't ultimately need. at the end of the day. Happy for no reason. Exactly, exactly. Happy because you are a member in, it, we're talking about your parasympathetic nervous system. Yeah. My cat is, I don't have a cat, but that helps. <laughs> I, I, your imaginary cat. Uh, I think of my cat when I was growing up, but it, 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 it like you. Oh, they're so Water, so, yeah. sleep, they're food. so good. And we can get into that place. The genius and the interesting thing about a human mind is it can go in all these other places. But I think what we're saying is it's interesting that our culture has pushed us into those other places for profit. Well, but that's the thing because what started as us trying to, using our, our very cool human brains that we have CHBs. to problem solve, to problem solve the, the, the issues of uh, uh, survival, right? These these five pillars. Okay, well, check it out. Check it out. We can all collaborate. We can work together. We start getting into the agricultural revolution, whatever it is. Now, I don't have to worry about food because Bob's doing the food. Bob's and, on the food, and 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 Barbara's on the um, building some shelter, and Tom's over there figuring out the the water. You know, so so now we all have these different tasks, and we don't have to work. But now that means we went from barter. And then we were like, okay, well now civilization is getting a little bit bigger, so it's not about barter anymore. Also, I can't be carrying around all of these supplies to build homes, so it's gotta be, let's use these shells. And then we use these shells, and that becomes our currency to just track all that stuff. And then we start becoming addicted to the shell. We want more shells, because more shells means, again, it's our, it's our own survival instinct playing against us. It's our survival instinct saying, you no, you need this, you need these, you want these, this is good for you. And people figured out, along the way that they can hijack that. Even if they didn't, it's not even intentional, but it's yeah. like, oh, well, I can market, I can sell. Right. And what marketing mar marketing and sales, what started as a much more, I believe, you know, in not innocuous, but a much more Damn. kind of like, uh, uh, um, uh, innocent. Uh, innocent pursuit, perhaps. It was more just like, hey, you know, we have a good product and we want to make sure people know about it and, yeah. you know, whatever. Well, then, you know, we get into the fucking... 50, the, the, the Mad Men era, really, yeah, right? Yeah, we start getting, yeah. into, well, even before that, you know, Hearst and all these no, people that were doing is, this yeah, kind of stuff. But yeah. it, it just, uh, you can track it. You can see it, how all of it just starts becoming far more manip manipulative and more manipulative and more manipulative. And status. And, all, and, 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 and yes. then what you have is what you are. Yeah. And, it's, and talk about toddlers. Uh, some of our parenting books would say, like, if you take something from Leela, it's like someone is taking her from me, like her dad. Sure. Like, oh like yeah. We are. We can bond like Wilson. I always reference Wilson yeah. and Castaway. Yeah, yeah. We can bond so hard, so much that our identity is is actually poured yeah. into, into a that thing. thing. Yeah. And, and uh, what for, I just love it. Or that it's or 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 perhaps it's poured into us. You know. Of course. Like it becomes a part of our receptacle. I yeah, fall yeah. into this all the yeah, time. Yeah. I, I, I neither of us. I don't think would say we're. I'm certainly not immune to. No one is. I'm like, should Sorry. I get the new iPhone? Yeah. Has that eyebrow? Yeah. And 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 then I catch myself when my phone is chunkier; it's slowing yeah. down more. Well, that's I kind of I know way. it is. Of course it is. And but this is this is the thing. This is what I'm saying. The the designed or planned obsolescence. If you're really watching it, and and if you're a person that has the means to upgrade their phone, yeah. you kind of like it. Yeah. Well, it becomes an excuse. I'm saying deep, deep, deep down. I mean deep. I don't down. know. I I I know I know the point that you're making, and I and I. And I would say perhaps. Because perhaps, you get the new yeah, shiny thing. Yeah. You go, maybe it's gonna yeah, work. Yeah, but for me though, I would be far happier to be to stop at a spot and not feel like I'm being manipulated. Like because authenticity, 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 authenticity. If we lived in a far more honest, authentic world, even where people are selling or something, but it's like, yeah. Yeah, these are these are bad for you. Booze is not good for you. I it wouldn't it be amazing if booze companies actually were like, hey, listen, guys, this shit's really not good for you. But it makes you fucking feel good and fun and you can kind of loosen up and you do right, what you do. Right. But we're not, by no means, we're not gonna should lie. you actually be doing a lot of this? This is not good for you. I mean, did, you did you listen to Andrew Huberman, uh, his podcast? I was just thinking about it. Oh man, his he did recent podcasts about nicotine, Alcohol. cannabis, and booze and they were so eye-opening. Yeah. But booze especially, and actually it shouldn't even be eye-opening because deep down we all know it's bad for us. But we all know I'm it's saying. a poison, but it is nothing but poison but other than just, a social lubricant. You just said my point though. I'm... I'm with you. Of course, I would like to buy an iPhone 
we always reference this book. It's called Existential Kink. It's how the things you hate, you secretly love them. Mm -hmm. Like we have this masochistic sure. tendency. Yeah. And I've gotten more in touch with that, meaning someone screws me over or upsets me or does the wrong thing. If I'm really careful or deliberate, I can find an underbelly where it's like, you know, tonguing the part of your gums that are sore. Like you like it. The, the, well, and I don't Jung think I'm talks about to that. that too in our shadow self. I mean, you know, that that we don't like in other people is really just a reflection of what you don't like in yourself, which is I think tying into that. Sure. You are you don't like this thing, but you like that you don't like it because or or not that you like that you don't like it, but it's I think it's kind of somewhat tied to that same kind of nature in us. We're sure. we're liking it because we still need to somehow live with ourselves. I think you might be making a different point that I also agree with, which is because I was upset with somebody this morning on the way. I, I just got some news, just kind of financial news. It wasn't sure. that big of a deal. Yeah. But I caught myself getting really excited at how mad I was. Or, or I felt it under here. It was bubbling. Yeah. And I, and I was like, it wants to come out. And I was like, what is that? And it was exactly what you're saying, which is if this person's guilty, I'm innocent. And I love that. Yeah. That's That's how projection works in my life yeah. is I can't wait to be like, you fucked me. And it's not going to happen. I'm not going to do it because I recognize yeah. that I'm the insane person and I just can't wait to yell at my own guilt. Sure. Like every every accusation I have for them, you're thoughtless or you're inconsiderate. Yeah. Those are all things that I'm Those afraid I am. That, yeah, that we all are afraid <laughs> that we are. And, but what I'm saying, and we are sometimes. Of course, you know, yeah, everybody yeah, yeah. is, for sure. But the, the quote, oh, sorry, you were going to say. Oh, I was Just to stick the landing, when I notice that my phone is getting slodgy and I, I am mad that my phone should work, there's another part of me that is more embarrassing and I don't like that I have this. But again, I think it's a conditioned thing as I go like, now I have an excuse to get the yes. new one. What, what, 100 percent it's the excuse. Yeah. And 100 percent But I think that, that's then... why it works. And that's why Instagram mm. ads work because they're like, don't you like that it's personalized? And you're like, yeah, I kind of do. Yeah, except that they are obviously listening to us. Even though they say they're not. This yeah. is I, I don't understand they're how they're not, how these ads can even end up on my Instagram. Yeah. When, for pyramid they say, pokers. Well, for what? Pyramid pokers. <laughs> for, <laughs> you can poke a pyramid. You can. Yeah. By now. Um, yeah, no, I mean, there, there's no, they, they say it's like, no, it, what it is, it's like, it's this the way the AI algorithm works where if you're around other people, they're looking through their funny these things. I'm like, what the fuck? No, not at all. Somehow we were talking about, you know, inflatable hammocks. I, nobody I was talking yeah, to yeah, yeah. before that was looking for inflatable hammocks. Yeah. I wasn't looking for inflatable hammocks. Nobody at all. And then inflatable five hammocks. minutes later, yeah. inflatable hammocks. You, they're not listening to us. Fuck that shit. They are listening to us, guys. They yeah. are listening to us. But I think we're we're just even this conversation one step closer to my kids, my kids' kids, whatever it may be going. Who cares? Oh no, we're there, bro. Yeah. We're not, it's not even your kids. Most of our society, Doesn't if we actually cared, we'd all be revolting right now. Yeah. This is really terrifying Black Mirror shit. This is 1984 Brave New World shit. Yeah. yeah. We, are a lot, we are watching it happen in front of our faces, and yet we're all so numb, sucking on the teat of all of this shit teat. that we're just. We're 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 so mud. We're right. so mud out. We we because with all of it. We're, you're with back, all of it. You're back to your original point. If like so, um, trust and integrity or reputation are all attributes that don't really matter as much as long as you can make money. Yes. And well, it, as long as you can make money and as long as you can have status and as long as, cool, man. Cool is cancer. Cool used to be what cool is supposed to be, which is cool under pressure, like the, like the Fonz, you know, like. Cool. Henry Winkler, one hundred percent. You the cool as it used to be as a as a word as a concept was the idea that you're cool under pressure that like you're you're you know you're unflappable that you're not that it also means you're not hot. Hot is well, like well, cool hey, is what's up, guys? <laughs> like cool is like Denzel, like be cool. Uh, well, I guess, but again, that's to me that's the same thing. It's like cool under pressure. Hot. It's unflappable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now cool is what do you wear? What what car do you drive? Are you asking? Like, Oh no no no! I'm it's, just <laughs> kidding. I'm just kidding. And that Do you is want all over our Instagram, all and our all social media. It's, it's right. Nobody saw it except for everyone. Um, it's all over everywhere, and we all still fucking give into it. We all still want to somehow not look uncool, yeah. and that's how they've got us. They got us by the balls, bro. And we're not doing what you were saying before, which is really just like the core tenant of Buddhism, which is just to not be in a state of desire one way or the other. 
Right. Don't desire that you have more and don't desire that you have less. Don't desire that uh, you want you want the pain to end and don't desire that you want the joy to continue forever. Just accept where you are right now and know that that is okay. Yeah. You are okay right there. You don't need that Pepsi. You don't need that fucking new car. You don't need these new clothes. You don't, you don't need anything to actually find a contentedness right. in and of yourself. But we are running from that at light speed, of bro, course. because that's not cool at all. Well, it's and, also not special. What, yeah. you, what, oh, you're, yeah. what you're saying is, I was just, I, I texted this to myself. We don't want God or nirvana or liberation or heaven even. We don't. We want this. We want to be special. We want to be unique. We either want to hate or love. We want God to hate us or love us. But we don't want to merge with oneness because you're not there anymore. You know what I'm saying? You're saying like, oh, just realize that you're Depending content. on one's view of what oneness is. But yeah, yeah. I think to most people, the idea of what that would be was would mean that, you know, that yeah, but where am I? Where's my specialness? Where's therefore my value? But I think that. I think that it's a, I don't know. I mean, I, I believe that we are all infinitely valuable and all entirely unimportant. And the sooner we can recognize that, the sooner we can all be living a much better life. You know? I completely agree. But to go to go into what we were saying, it's like we'd rather be buying the clothes and the, and the fighting for the specialness and the fighting for the coolness than recognizing, I say this almost every podcast, but the great way is not difficult for those who have no preferences. And recognizing that you don't need anything. In fact, you need to wake up to your your addiction to need, yeah. and and to and to lose that desire. Yeah. The, one of my favorite Buddhist things is, "Why am I happy? I'm happy because I know this couch is already broken. It's already dust. It's already mm. gone. Mm. The mountains have already been leveled. It's all mm. impermanent." So yeah. you recognize that. Yeah. But yeah. what I want, I think, the first step to merging with truth is recognizing that you. Deep down, back to the unconscious phone desires, you don't actually want it because nobody taught you to want it. So, you don't actually want what the phone, the oblivion of perfect love <laughs> and oneness. <laughs> well, this is the problem. I mean, no doubt. I mean, you know, so much of what I talk about. In You'd the like book to be is this. in the oblivion of perfect love and oneness if you could sell it to someone else. You know what I'm saying? Like, we don't have a lot of good examples. There are some. Sorry. Right. Oh no. Tell no, me no, no, it's no. in but, your book. But, but well that well what you're saying is which is which is that well in a sense you're you are absolutely right. We don't know. We don't have an example. We don't have examples. We don't have enough examples. We don't have enough that is pointing us toward the beauty that is compassion, the beauty that is empathy, the beauty that is kindness, the beauty that is patience, the beauty that is actual love. And I'm not talking about the feeling of love. I'm talking about um one of my one of my favorite quotes, which is, I believe it's Thomas Aquinas, but it goes all the way back to Aristotle, which is, love is to will the good of the other. It does not mean that I feel lovey-dovey for this person. That's the feeling of feeling in love, perhaps, but that's a feeling. You, the, the, the love that is love is a choice, and it's the, you know, that we don't see, we don't have not been taught the beauty of what any of these things are, because they're so antithetical to all the shit that we're being sold all the fucking time, all the time. And unfortunately, that all starts in the home as well. Because if we don't have parents, and by the way, almost none of us really did. I mean, I would say the vast majority of people did not have parents that really understood what it meant to love themselves. Mm. So how could they possibly model or show their children how to love themselves? Mm. Not that it's not, not that it hasn't happened, not that there aren't some fucking unicorn parents out there, but by and large, you know, it just wasn't societal for a long, 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 long time. I think people like Jesus were, were trying to say these types of things. Like, can we actually love each other? What does it mean to love your enemy and pray for your persecutor? Like that kind of shit. That's real love. But uh, but that's why it was so crazy. Nobody believed that shit. You were like, oh, you're a Samaritan? Fuck you, you can die. Mm -hmm, you know, like mm -hmm. they were, we were all just, you know, just split up and bifurcated the left to right and center. And all that just trailed with us into modern society. Even if we're all like a melting pot in the US, we still, our parents still never learned generationally to love themselves. Well, that's what we're saying. I'm completely agreeing, and I, I really enjoy your brain. <laughs> I'm just saying, if ditto, I if brother, I ditto. hate a, Samari a Samaritan, I exist. This is what I'm saying. Yes. When you love, sure. you start to vanish. Yes. When you forgive, when you are mercy, <laughs> I'm not even forgiving you. Let's say you did me dirt. Yeah, yeah. And I forgive you. That's that's cheap. Fuck. That sucks. Because I'm acknowledging that you did it. Mercy is just like. You didn't do anything because nothing's, it's all 
it's all meaning the ego is never going to like it. It's 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 a complete dissolving into perfect love, loving yeah. lovingness. Yes, but you vanish when that happens. Yes. Jesus vanished. Jesus vanished. He was here, but he wasn't here in the way that we're here because the way that we're here is by judging. Yeah. Demarcating, judging ourselves and judging and then ourselves. judging others. Yes, exactly. Based on if completely you, subjective even ideas of what we're thought. You and I are right hanging now. out and going like, well, "What is his definition of love?" Sure. I'm not saying it's bad, but this is how oh, I, I exist. Think you are. Oh, not at all. No, not I know, but I, I'm, no. Hear me, hear me now. Call me now. Hear me now what and I'm, understand me later. Yeah, there it is. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> I'm not even saying we're. Dis- I'm saying you and I right now are defining our identity bouncing off of one another because that's what it is. Sure. I don't think that's what Jesus did. I don't think Jesus was interested in going like, where are you and where am I and where do I fit? Because love is, this goes back to my thing. We don't want it because you're not there anymore. You could say you're just a vessel of love. I think though, I I would say though, and maybe this is just the, I don't know, the, the optimist in me or whatever, but I actually do think deep, 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 deep down at the core core, like the, the corest of cores is our soul that may have even, you know, depending on what you believe, you know, come and reincarnated. This could be multiple, like whatever it is, but home, like, you know, because I do think home is is whatever that other place is. Like Ram Dass says, we're all just walking each other home. Mm-hmm. So that means we started there. We're going to go back there. And whether, you know, if you're in the Judeo-Christian, you know, Muslim kind of tree, that's the end and you're back home. Or if you're in the other type of tree where there's reincarnated energy, that means you're still going back to home, whatever home base is, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I think that we all want deep down, deep, deep, deep down. We all actually want that and we know what it feels like because that is where all the love is. That's where it's all, that source energy and love is all generated. Completely. And so we want it. We just, we come back into these flesh bags, these meat bags, and that perhaps even is like kind of what, again, and I know you understand these types of things, uh, you know, where biblically you're talking about like the, you know, the flesh and the spirit and all that jazz. Like the spirit is our soul, is is still remembering or is connected to whatever home is. And these meat bags that we get thrown into have these more kind of, by the way, and I don't think all like, oh, these are horrible, sinful things or whatever, but uh, but though, but they are more deceived by the ego. They are more deceived by survival because these need to survive. Our soul actually doesn't need to survive. Yeah, when I'm saying you don't want perfect oneness, I mean your ego. Sure, And yes. by the way, this yes. is a fun Christian fact that you can carry in your back pocket. It's a fun one. Is that when Paul wrote about the flesh, he actually, that was his word for the ego. So when we talk about... Well, my, that, my spirit's yeah, so hungry, sense. but my flesh is weak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We thought it meant my ding dong. I can't stop jizzing. My it, it means it. It oh meant what we would say in modern spiritual. Well, I've I've always kind of believed that. Let yeah. me say parlance. 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 I was like, oh, don't it. <laughs> Let me say parlance. Okay. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> so I'm agreeing with you, buddy. To just ce what you're saying. <laughs> oh man, I'm gonna take not that only ce <laughs> are we going home. <laughs> Are you ready to bake your noodle? Let's bake a noodle. If time is an illusion, which even our quantum friends sure, agree, yeah, totally. We are home. We could call Ooh. that. We could call that heaven. We could call that oneness. We sure. could call it the Tao. Sure. We could call it Nirvana. Sure. It's all happening at once. So we didn't go anywhere. What's in the way of us recognizing that is our specialness, is our ego, is our differentiation, our judgments and our lack of forgiveness. So our job here is to, I would say, is to use this dream or this dance or this play for me to forgive you, whatever it might be, me to love you, me to extend mercy to you, me to feed you, me to love you, me to be kind to you. Because in doing that to you, I'm I'm getting rid of my guilt and my blindness that nothing has happened. If God is one, if it's all one, I'm part of that oneness. And all this guilt, sin, fear, all that stuff is an illusion. And you and I become vehicles to remember that, to remember, to become a member. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, dude. Let's do some cook. Uh, <laughs> oh, you haven't already? I thought you were doing... Yeah, no. You seem like you've been on like at least three bumps. <laughs> I would um, like to see what happens if you drank that magic mind I gave you. Don't do it. <laughs> what is it? No, that's water. The little guy. What's the little guy? That's magic mind. I wonder if... What I, is magic mind? I'll tell you... Well, okay. It's, it's, should I drink it right now? Yeah, you should. Shake it oh. up. It's, it's matcha... So it's adaptogens. You know what adaptogens oh, yeah, are? Yeah, 
yeah. help you cope with stress. Yeah. Nootropics help you think. Yeah. And a little bit of caffeine from matcha. And it's fucking dope. And it tastes great too. Uh, and it tastes great too. Speaking, they are a sponsor, but they're a sponsor because I love them. Oh, yeah, yeah. You understand? No, 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 no. Totally. Started that way. What if you hate it? You go, <laughs> just like projectile. <laughs> but like way more than just what this was. Yeah, yeah. Right? That, like, that, out of all that. But that seems like you brought that in. <laughs> I, I, I'll give you a case. It's great for oh, yeah. performing if yeah. you're on set and all that. Oh, great. When, when you're Shazam. Great, great, great. Well, you, listen, I need, I'm need. i not supposed to be drinking uh, coffee right now because coffee itself. That's so, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this I'll, is what I'll, you want. I'll totally take this as an alternative. The whole thing is magic like. Magic mind. <laughs> <laughs> Say magicmind.com slash weird. Uh, <laughs> co slash weird. Um, we'll be right back. Speaking we'll of be all, right back. all this capitalist talk, and then I was like, we got to pay Katie. Okay. Somebody's got to pay okay, Katie. Okay. We'll be back in uh, three, two, three minutes, and we'll, and we'll get more into this. It's gonna be, it's it's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. This episode is brought to us by our friends at Mizen, Mizen, Mizen and Maine, the makers of the best, most incredible performance fabric dress shirts, and frankly, just the best dress shirts I've discovered in years. As a touring stand-up comedian, I'm constantly looking for clothes that are comfortable enough to fly in, but will also look good when I get on stage, because often I'm traveling the same day I'm performing. I want to be able to get off the plane, look great, feel comfortable on the plane, and then go on stage and feel confident and great about what I'm wearing. And Mizzen and Maine has put an end to these terrible, scratchy, ill-fitting dress shirts that I was just not excited about and they've made not only the best looking dress shirts for real, for real, but the best feeling. It's always about the material. Frankly, I haven't even really been a big fan of dress shirts until I found Mizzen and Maine because I hadn't found one that fit just right, looked just right, and the material on the outside, everything about it feels perfect. The fit, the look, and the feel of the material all three, Mizzen and Maine. That's why you gotta check them out. They are the inventors of the performance fabric dress shirt. There's nothing worse than being uncomfortable and Mizzen and Maine is here to help. That is why they make the most lightweight, breathable and moisture wicking dress shirt on earth. I can say, because I perform in these shirts, they absolutely are moisture wicking and that is super, super important for me. They're high performance dress shirts, warm in the winter, cool in the summer, keep me warm on the airplane too, which is super important. Think of this clothing as your secret weapon for any occasion. I'm confident if you give Mizzen and Maine a try, you'll never go back to conventional men's clothing again. This is definitely one of those companies that when I started using them and we got the promo code, I've been using my own promo code to re-up because they are actually the best dress shirts I've ever worn. It's a fabric, I've never felt like it. I've never felt a fabric like this before. And here's the best part, one of the best parts, I, I would say the fit and feel and the uh, fabric is the best part. But one of the other best parts is that they are completely machine washable. That means no more expensive trips to the dry cleaner. And for the cold weather, they've got amazing flannels, pants, sweaters, and jackets made from that same mizzen and main material that they have become famous for. So even if you aren't a dress shirt person, they've got clothing you need to feel to believe. So if you want the best cold weather clothing this holiday season, check out Mizzen and Maine. Right now, go to M-I-Z-Z-E-N-A-N-D-M-A-I-N.com and use promo code WEIRD to get $25 off any regular price order of $130 or more. That's $25 off when you go to Mizzen and main.com and use promo code weird hot cold casual formal they've got you covered you're gonna love it check it out for real mizzen and main.com and use promo code weird to show your support of the show all right back to the app we're back and we're back <laughs> <laughs> oh man podcasts are great I um, know. Going back, so really quickly though, going to what you were talking about, about how Please. it's all happening concurrently, right? Yes. So. Which means this is a dream. Which was totally a, a great dream, a uh, fever dream. <laughs> well, a great fever dream. Um, But no, you know, I, totally. Like I, I was sitting there not too long ago, actually, you know, as I've, as I've kind of pulled at various threads within my own kind of, you know, spirituality and, and walk with God and stuff. And, you know, I, I can't remember who it was. I think it was, 
Stephen Fry, maybe. Um, although he was making an argument that I'd heard before throughout my life and always had a hard time reconciling, which was how can God be both all powerful and all benevolent if so many of these horrible things are going on in the world that people, you know, kids are born with cancer or car accidents or wars or earthquakes or whatever the fuck is going on. And I remember kind of, you know, growing up within my, whatever my version of Christianity was, I ne I was always like, I don't understand. Like, I, that's a really great argument and I don't know how to reconcile this. And, you know, unfortunately, most Christian leaders, I find, God bless them, they, their, their, their hearts may be in great places, but they haven't done the, the, the mental gymnastics to figure that out. And so it's always like, well, it's a mystery. Well, it's a mystery. I'm like, I, I don't think that God, in, if in fact there is this God that we're all talking about, I don't think that God operates in this way. I think actually there's a lot more logic behind all of it if we really wanna do the work to figure out how, how does all this matrix works, you know, how the matrix right. works right. and how, how, what, how is the scaffolding and how does it all go? which again, the more we dive into quantum and all this kind of stuff, they're seeing these incredible kind of, you know, uh, 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 um, blueprints of various things and how, the, you know, things work and how they don't work. But anyway, so the, I, I hear this argument throughout my life and I'm like, I, I, this is a really good argument and I don't know how to reconcile this until I actually allowed my kind of nerd comic book reading brain to get just a little outside the box and creative. And I go, oh, wait a minute. No, 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 of course. He, he, it, whatever, God is in fact all powerful. And I believe all good in that all good resides within the entity or the energy that is God. One might also argue that all darkness is a part of that too. And there's the duality and whatever. But point is, um, I was able to finally reconcile it in that, oh yes, there is clearly a, an infinite multiverse and there always has been because if God, if we all agree, if Christians believe there's this God and this God is all powerful and operates outside of space and time, well, guess what? That means God is seeing every possible variation of your life and my life and everyone else's life and every version of this earth that existed and didn't exist, the the the, the star matter that, that created this galaxy or didn't create this galaxy, all of those infinite possibilities have all happened, which means there's this incredible justice in it all because those kids that, die, that are born with cancer and die, there's other uh, timelines where they were president of the United States or the world or whatever. Mm -hmm. There were versions of it where we died of cancer. There were versions where we didn't get born at all. We've never existed. All of that is going on it's simultaneously. And to your point, therefore, also is all of this home, of this other place. It's all happening in this space. That's interesting. Yeah. I mean, again, theoretically, but it's I'm with you. Interesting. You're yeah. one of the few guests that was like taking a stab at something like that. I don't mean to take a stab like that. No, was no. great. That was great. That, yeah, thanks, My man. friend Michael Gunger in his book, it's called This. It's a great book and a great title for a book. This is yeah. great. Yeah. Uh, especially because it's about non-duality. But he goes, if you were infinity, what game wouldn't you play? Uh, um, so I know it's weird yeah. to think of all of these horrible things as games, but like. No, but 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 it, I but I but but I but I absolutely what, understand. What, I absolutely what understand what you're saying. Wouldn't you I absolutely that? understand what you're saying because I think that we unfortunately again, through a lot of religion, we have applied our humanness to God in, in, in these very strange ways. What's it? Yep. And if you are an infinite being that, it, by the way, that is all as well, like God, God well, is Richard like a force Rur in Star Wars. God is in and through all things. God suffers <clears throat> with us. Like when we're sure. like, where is God when yeah. this terrible thing is happening? Yeah. God is the thing that the terrible thing is happening to and the person that's mourning the terrible thing, meaning God suffers with us, through us, and as us. So that's And, this, this and is, the thing that, Richard that, Rohr, that yeah. at, at the very least allows the terrible thing to happen, if not also is the terrible thing. Yeah, that's right. Which is even more complex and crazy. But again, who the fuck are we to question this thing that we agree, or again, if you agree there is a God, which you know, there are more theists than, than atheists. And, and if you are a theist, I mean, literally, it's kind of like God 101. If you believe in the concept of a God, that means you're believing in this concept of an infinite being on some level, which means who the fuck are you to even start questioning what its 
uh, morals or its motives or its character or anything else. Like the way we, the most arrogant thing that human beings, I think have almost ever said in the history of human beings is, I know there's a God and I know it completely. Yeah. Like what the fuck? Right. You are this infinitely teeny little speck of a nothing. How could you possibly think that you knew all that is an infinite thing? Right. Like the, the hubris, but it's also the hubris is what's killing us all the time. This right. is the thing that's fucking us all up all the time. Right. It's very interesting. I have a couple things to throw your way. Throw them. One is- um, Loving this conversation. Father Greg Boyle said this to me, but I'm trying to remember who said it originally because he was quoting somebody. I have it in my email. But he says, uh, God protects me from nothing but sustains me through everything, I think is a very ooh, ooh, important yeah. thing to say. Yeah. Because a lot of people, especially when we become atheists, and as I did, it's usually because of some letdown in security. Sure. Someone broke into the property. Yeah. Something happened that you didn't want. And you go, well, where is this? When you say all-powerful and infinite, yeah. let's, let's be real. We're picturing a person like us who just can do whatever he wants, yeah. like Shazam. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I work you into it. Yeah. <laughs> and also it just exists through all time. When infinite doesn't mean exists through all time, it, it, it means it's timeless. It's completely, it, there is no time. It's the absence of time. Yeah. And also all powerful, this is the one that I'm going to do my best to articulate to you. Um, I'm getting it from a, a Course in Miracles. I had never heard of an explanation for these things until I studied the Course, which has some similarities to Hinduism and Buddhism, but here we go. Mm -hmm. uh, they would say that, according to the, the Course's theology, that God didn't create this world. That's why it's so fucked up, because God is perfect oneness. Uh, we It's split into his son. I know it, th these are metaphors. Yeah, yeah. Oneness yeah, yeah. can't split. But we are that perfect oneness is son. We were with God. We had an idea, because uh, everything is an idea, that we could be separate from God. Mm. And in that instant, we uh, created this world. That was what started the Big Bang, was an idea mm. of separateness. Mm. But once you're separate, God is perfect oneness. This is where it gets really chunky funky. And I won't, be, chunk funk. I won't be able to answer all your questions. I'm just letting you know I'm not an expert in this, in this uh, uh. metaphysics. The idea I'm is leaving. that God, <laughs> God doesn't know about this world, meaning this is a puppet show. And the only thing God is interested in isn't what happens to the puppets. It's changing the puppeteer. It's waking your mind, your soul, your witness mm. to the reality that the separation couldn't happen, that we are still with God, that we are in heaven, that or, what, or perfect oneness or right, nirvana. Right, 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 right. This is where it, it no, no, I'm, goes I'm with these other I'm ones. Tracking. And this stuff is just a passing show and it's not the point. So we shouldn't pray to God to help me have a good conversation with Zach right. or to find a parking spot or to save me from this, that, or the other. We should only pray to God to change our mind. And by mind, I mean the Buddhist mind, capital M mind, uh, you could call it your soul, your spirit. Sure. Yeah. Have that make a different choice because right now it's so seduced by the ups, the downs, the lefts, the rights, the angry, the judgment, the vitriol, the violence, the hate, all of it. It's too seductive. So we stay here and we need to go, wait, I've made not an, it's not a sinful choice. There's no error. Nobody's mad. Right, right. But we're actually hiding from God here. We made a place projected by our own guilt to hide from God because we think because we separated from him, we killed him. Because here we are in a world of duality. So how could perfect oneness exist if you yeah. and I are having a dualistic experience? Right, so right. we killed God. He's mad at us. He's coming to get us like I know what you did last summer. <laughs> and even if you like hit- Like an angry half-dead yes, fisherman with exactly. a hook. And no matter how many times you hit him with your car, he's still going to come back like a zombie and kill you. Wow. So we live in fear. And would rather play this game over and over and over, and that's and this is again, this is their thoughtsism over and over and over because we can't, we're we're afraid, we're afraid of going home. Mm -hmm. So you need to forgive one another, forgive yourselves, wake up that there's been no error, and then you and then you then you return to where you already are, and the separation never happened. That's yeah. my that's the best I can do at summarizing it. I mean, listen, I, I track all that, I track yeah. all that. I um, could see you getting it. I, I was like, you're a rare bird, man. <laughs> there's well, a lot of people I, on this podcast. I'm not saying they glaze over. No, no, but no, no, I was no. Like, wow. I, I, listen, but you know, my, I have one of my great weaknesses is that I I literally do not read enough like i'm so impressed with people like yourself who are so well read and, and and genuinely i really am it's one of it's one of the things i i'm trying to get better at and i struggle with but even though i haven't read so as it's, much it's as on I, tape it's all <laughs> yeah well still even yeah. still you know i have a, i actually almost have a harder time 
listening to a book because it's I'm more easily distracted yeah, you go visually. Off. Yeah. You know, I'll I'll just I'll be listening, but then I'm something is distracting me visually. Yeah. And then my brain's going in a million places as opposed to if I'm have a visual stimulus. Granted, I just paid, you know, words on a page. Yeah. But at least that kind of keeps me locked in a little bit. But anyway. This might be why we love comic books. Uh, yeah. uh, absolutely. Because like, it's not well, just- Well, and you get pictures with them too. Yeah, that's so, what I'm saying. Yeah, it's not yeah, just yeah, words. Yeah, totally. Like. Um, but, but anyway, point is, I don't read enough, but I spend a lot of time thinking. I, I always have. Yeah. I, 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 I want- because I want to know what's real. I want to know what's really real. I don't want to just believe some bullshit that my parents taught me or anybody else taught me or whatever. Well, you said that earlier. Sorry, keep going. Yeah, yeah. I, that, that all of these thought systems, of course, in miracles, Buddhism, Hinduism, even uh, mystical Christianity, would say there's a part of your awareness, not your brain, yeah. but the witnessing, the thing that's watching your brain yeah. that you call I. Yeah, 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 yeah. We are not the voice of our mind. We are the one who hears it. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, yeah. smoky. From gel. the untethered soul, which I haven't read. <laughs> who needs it you just summarized it but that witnessing presence that's in all of us yeah. does remember perfect oneness and does remember god so what you're saying i don't want to read it i don't want to, i want to experience it that's mysticism well it's not that i don't want to read it though it's that i just genuinely struggle with reading but you want to read it so you can experience it i want to and read you it. Are, it sounds like you are experiencing I, I, i'm it. experiencing it but i i think that one of the beautiful things about reading is that particularly if you're reading other people who are are enlightened or who have had you know um really interesting and cool experiences in their experiencing of it they're able to put things into words that perhaps you haven't been able to really figure out yet yeah that's right and that's why i wish i read more i read more because i i would like I'm over to over here going like i don't yeah, think there's yeah. a problem well, here well anyway uh, anyway anyway <laughs> um can i say this you sound like the people i talk to who read a lot well all right <laughs> so who cares good um, but, but, that was but, a great face. but, but what I was going to say was, uh, tracking all that you said, I, I can, I can, I can see where that ar argument, whatever, you know, how, whatever you want to call it. Perspective. It's another story. Perspective. Another yeah, story. yeah, exactly. Um, but I would say though, the thing that I, I guess the first thing that comes to mind in that, that I would, my big question is, well, then in that it's kind of, you're operating under the, the pretense that we humans and earth are the only existence of something that would be life outside of, right? So like in that scenario, we wanted to be more, we got splintered off, we splintered ourselves off. God yeah. still knows we're all still a part of it, but we did this. But I'm, I'm of the belief that in this massive universe, there are probably other planets that are populated by some kind of other life, which means, well, then what the fuck did they do? Maybe they did the same thing simultaneously. Maybe they did it at a different time. But if it all goes back to the Big Bang, it would have all had to happen kind of in that moment. But, For sure. You know? no, I, but I, I don't know. Again, this is just you know unpacking and thinking about things. Love, need. Yeah. I would say this thought system would say that uh, the, the oneness that we were was like a pane of glass and it broke and it splintered. Mm. And every piece of glass chemically biochemically or whatever you want to say is still glass but it's it's the shattered pieces of god's one son is what they would say including all those other aliens and, and, and all those other including aliens every stuff. microbe in your body is also acting out the sure. same yes. thing 100 life that's is actually, life life is life is life is life that's what you would and like god about is, this is all yeah. life in my opinion god that's, god is like the, again like the force in star wars like the mitochondria like in and through all things yes it is all even the things that maybe aren't alive as well i mean i gotta believe that all matter is still god all all time space it's all matter, mind like, you you might like uh rupert spira too that's how i got warmed up to the course he, he not not that he's he is enough in himself but he Whatever it took me. He was the, the amuse bouche. For... He was the amuse bouche. I would never call <laughs> Rupert Spira the amuse bouche, but he, I bet he'd love it. He would say that all of this is like so. Our experience of this couch, we we think that the scientific model is that objective reality exists, right? And we participate with it through our consciousness. Most mystical thought systems are, would say, as as Rupert explains it, they are consciousness meaning there's nothing to seeing except the part of me that knows what i'm seeing so mm. seeing is knowing right. hearing is knowing right. touching is knowing it all happens so this this sofa is actually made of knowing it doesn't exist it is in the same exact way that a dream is made you make every sure. aspect of the dream 
That's that a lot of the yeah. And by the cooler, way, there's science. There's there's, there's hardcore quantum physics is saying the same thing. That are saying this like this doesn't exist unless we're looking at it. Which that's I what have I'm a saying. Really my knowing. I, yeah, but I, and by the way, which may be the case. But I, man, that's where I'm, my noodle gets, gets really cooked because that means we all three of us have to be having the same dream in order for these to exist in the same time in the same space. That's a shared in the same hallucination. Shape. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But which is there, like, what but if the there's fuck? only if there's only one mind. And, and I really think if you trace that back, sure. what else yeah. could there be? But yeah, yeah. but one. But that, that's why I like the dr the dream thing. Last night I had a dream, and I was hanging out with some people, and we were talking, and I was touching, and I was seeing, and I was perceiving. Yeah, yeah. And I woke up, and I was like, oh, I was in my bed. I think the same thing is happening here, and and it. This is Rupert Spire. He said it when he was nine years old. He said nine nine. He goes. Or How old is he, he or now? He was German, and he was saying no. I, I can't be sure. <laughs> <laughs> but um, he he was he's in his fifties or sixties now. But he was saying when he was a little boy, he goes, "This is God's dream, and it's our job to make it a nice dream." Mm. And I was like, "Here's mm. why you make it a nice dream, though. If I'm judgeful, judgeful, judgmental, <laughs> full of judgment, yeah. ugly, nasty to you, again, that's just projection, and that's keeping me yeah. in the dream. If I yeah. forgive you." Yeah. Meaning not even logically go like, well, Zach was a piece of shit to me today, but maybe he was grumpy. Yeah. Fuck that low-grade, yeah. well-vodka forgiveness. Yeah. I mean mercy. Like, if I Radical think Zach is, yeah. is fucking with me, I believe Zach is a separate thing from me. I think that oneness is a, is a lie and the ego's reality is the truth. And that's that's a that's sort of a blasphemy, not meaning a guilt, not something to feel bad. Yeah. It's just not true. Yeah. I, I believe that the dream is real. All I need to work on is my puppeteer, not the puppet show. Yeah. And if if you as a puppet punch me, getting mad at the puppet is fucking dumb. It's the puppeteers. Let's fix the puppeteers. It, truly, truly. And but uh, I would say though that you know at least what I've experienced, and one of the things I talk about in the book is you know there's there's it's you, you we want to get to radical love, but you got to start with radical acceptance. Mm. Then you get to radical forgiveness, mm. which hel helps you to get to the radical love. But the radical forgiveness and the acceptance. That stuff, you know, and and us, you know, getting to this place where it's not just this again, this well vodka forgiveness of yeah. like, okay, I guess I'll forgive you. It's no, no, no. It's recognizing that anyone who's doing anything, punching you, punching someone else, starting a fucking war, whatever, pick your poison. Every single person is still operating out of their conditioning. We are all products of our environment. Mm. At the end of the day, I mean, you could argue that there's sociopaths and psychopaths, and that's a slightly different thing because it's already like biochemical or whatever. But even that, there's still a product. Like, how can you judge? Right. How can you look at those people, even for the horrendous things that they do? Jeffrey Dahmer, whatever, you know, and you go, that's, and it doesn't mean you excuse the things that they do. You don't excuse the puppet punching you in the face. It's not an excuse. Well, that puppet goes to puppet jail. The, well, well, we just don't buy it. We just go. It's it's a puppet jail. But put that well, puppet well, in jail. Well, oh, yeah, sure. He punched another puppet. But but that. <laughs> but even that can be a better process if we were to actually stop dehumanizing. Yes. Or depuppetizing. This is this is Father Greg. The, He's yes. like it's not. Uh, evil, it's yeah. mental illness. It's, yeah, all of it. It's some version of somebody not understanding what is actually a more righteous way of going about doing well, so. Well, everything is love or asking for love. And, or And a lot of these things yeah. that need to be loved can be mental diagnoses. And the further down we go, yeah. guilt starts to become a much more complicated issue. We always reference the sniper in Texas. It's one of the first mass shootings. And he remembers his suicide note said, uh, you need to examine my brain. I something's wrong with me. Yeah. Like I, I'm not. I don't want to be doing this. Basically, yeah. They did. They cut him open, and he had a tumor in the part of his brain that controls sociopathic, violent behavior. Yeah. So was he guilty? Question mark. Is anyone guilty? Question mark. But here's who doesn't. Isn't that what Jesus was talking here's about? Who, Exclamation point. Yes. <laughs> but here's who doesn't want that. If we're really being honest, there's none righteous. You no don't want mercy. We don't want it. We. Do, this is what I'm saying. I know you. Th you think you do. I and think maybe, deep and down maybe we you and do. I. We want the oneness. Okay, deep, deep down we deep want it. The part of us that and we all and we're all here trying to get it. And but but we okay, get the part up of us the that way. the part of us that wants it. I'm going to say when I say we don't want it. Right. Let me be more clear. Okay. Our ego doesn't want it. Our separate selves don't want sure. it. Sure. The memory of God, of course, wants yeah. it. But I, the, but I, because but it I, still is it right? But I would, I would say that our soul and our ego are separate. I think the ego comes with the body. I think the soul is of the purer version of what we actually are. And so, 
for my own terminology, I would say when we, what we want, what the, the, the real essence of we is the soul, and what the soul wants is that. The ego and the bullshit and the flesh or you know, whatever that is, that doesn't want it because that is the construct of whatever this particular simulation is yeah. and what survival is and all of that jazz. And by, and by the way, and you can see it, and you see it throughout the rest of the animal kingdom. There is no mercy in the animal kingdom. I don't know if you're familiar with this um, uh, Instagram account called Nature is Metal. It is fantastic. It's something I, I, I encourage everyone to go follow. Just, if nothing else, just to have a reminder of what we are still attached to in the animal world. And it is a lot of fucking horribleness. Yeah. Little bunnies and our prey, our prey animals, and little and wolves are predators, and they don't give two fucks about the 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 the, the bunny or its family or anything else. Yeah. And by the way, and we don't, and none of us hold them accountable. We're like, well, they're animals; they're they're doing that thing. That's because their instincts, their survival instincts, their ego is just going and going and going. We have an opportunity mm. as human beings with a with a whatever different type of soul, not to, I, I think animals all, all also have their own versions of souls or whatever that is. Maybe they're even the same type of thing, but they're in a, because they're in a different container, they act they have, in a different way, a different, but, uh, but, higher but, function. but but nonetheless, the we, the actual we, I think we want it. I think we're, I think that is, I think that's the end game. I think that like, if this is all one cool big simulation video game, and if there is like a, a kill screen, like to get to the actual end, means we all actually get everyone to put down our fucking swords and truly love each other and forgive each other. And that means accepting that we're all doing our best, every one of us. Yeah. And if we saw somebody go and do a horrible thing, and Instead of us being immediately, you animal, you monster, you fucking piece of shit, which is what we all want to do because our ego wants to feel superior to this person mm. so that we can survive better. And so we go to these places and we deem them monsters and we put them in a criminal system that is so fucking broken and just making them even more animalistic in their ego and their drive and their programming, <clears throat> that's getting us farther and farther from the win. It's just bringing us, it, it's not just farther apart it's from the win them. right now, yeah. like the actual long-term win. The long-term win is when we can all actually do this thing that I, again, Jesus, whomever he was or whatever all that actually, you know, some I've even heard people say that he was Seneca, which is an interesting theory. But point is, the Jesus- the emperor? Was that? The emperor? I don't think Seneca was, was Seneca an emperor? I don't think he was. But, but anyway, we're talking about the same guy. Anyway, anyway, but the point is, when Jesus is talking about to love your enemy and pray for your persecutor, this is exactly what he's talking about. He's saying, how the fuck, how can you think that this people, you deem them your enemy? Mm. That you deem them your persecutor and they might actually be persecuting you, but they're doing it because they think what they're doing is right. They're not, no, nobody's spinning, sitting around spinning their mustache being like, I can't wait to do wrong. Ah, I want to do wrong. Right. No, they think somehow in their upbringing, up in their programming and how they came into this world, their ego is telling them, this is how you do it. This is how you survive. This is right, whatever right, you need right. to do. And the sooner we can all recognize that, oh, they're wrong, but it's not because they're evil. It's because they're wrong. Right. And we have to, and it doesn't mean we don't correct these people. We actually we still have to, it doesn't mean, because people say, well, if I just forget, if we just do that, if we just forgive people, well, then they'll just keep traipsing all over the place and they'll just keep doing these bad things. Like, no, 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 no. There's a difference between accept, like forgiving and, ex, and just like excusing. We're not excusing anything. People still need to be responsible for their actions. Mm. You can hold them accountable without saying you fucking monster. Mm -hmm. Instead saying, hey, hey, you know, Ted, I don't know if you know this, but you killed those people. That is 100% not okay, and that is very wrong, and you're gonna have to go to prison because of that. But we're gonna do everything we can while you're in this place to try and help you figure out why you did that. Mm. And help us all understand why. Because if we all understand, if we all actually care about the why, we start to solve the problem. Right. But we don't care about the fucking why. We just go, fuck, doesn't matter. They did wrong, according to whatever our, by the way, totally subjective current societal norms are. Right. That is ever shifting sands. Like, you know, what right. we think right now, and particularly in like, you know, and again, this is one of my issues with at least kind of where woke has gone in a lot of ways, which is like, well, we got to cancel all these people from the past. It's like, hey guys, listen, they might not have been doing things the way we do things now. And thank God we do a lot of the things we do them the way we do them now. But to think for one second that they thought they were doing, they all thought they were doing the right thing. Right. All those people were playing by whatever the rules were of that 
fucking time. Mm -hmm. And nobody was sitting around being like, I can't believe it. Like, and who's not to say that a hundred years from now, let's say nobody eats animals anymore and they're all gonna be looking back at all of our barbarian asses for eating animals. Right. Now I I actually like eating animals. I think it's a great source of protein, probably the best, whatever, it's a whole nother conversation. But you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, this is course. like the sliding scale of morality. It's like, what the, no, stop the sliding scale and just recognize that we're all, no matter where you're born in the history of mankind, you are doing the best that you think that you can do with the tools that were available to you at that fucking time. Right. And as soon as we can all wrap our head around that idea, that's where we all start going to a better place. But that requires us not wanting to constantly sit in judgment of everyone else, which is what we do. And by the way, reality television is a perfect example of that. Because tell me one reality television show where the audience is not judging the people on the television the entire time. It's either you're judging them because they're on a competition show, they're singing songs or doing America's Got Talent, whatever it is, so you're actually judging their performance, yeah. or you're just judging their character as people, which is why everyone's like, well, it's, you, know, you ask people like, why do you watch The Bachelor? Why do you watch Keeping Up With Our Kardashians? It's a guilty pleasure. It's a guilty pleasure. It's like, uh, 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 do you have any idea how bad that is? Like, And by the way, and again, I, this isn't me trying to cast dispersion or judgments on anyone involved in that stuff, but I do think we all have to take a really fucking hard long look at this because it's really just people sitting around being like, <laughs> these fucking idiots, right? Am I right? Oh my God. They think this is love? Oh my God. Oh wow. I'm rooting for Kristen because she's a bitch. Oh, Oh yeah, eat that popcorn. Right. It's all just judgment. It's all just so you can feel a little bit better about yourself at the end of the day. And scapegoat. Sure, same, well, yeah, to me that's all in the same bucket. But yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Judgment is scapegoating. Yeah. Again, uh, A Course in Miracles really has you watch your thoughts and all your attack thoughts and your hate thoughts. And I was like, oh my God, I've been swimming so deep in like that person's an idiot because I'm so afraid that I'm an idiot. So I make them the idiot. And as long as they're an idiot, I'm not an idiot because yeah. I know they're an idiot. And you're absolutely right. Uh, reality TV is like running with weights. If you're training in the Judgment Olympics, reality TV is like running on, in a pool. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's it, like, it is, man. It's like running it is. with a lot of resistance and you get really good at it. Yeah. I would say that every uh, there's a lot of things like that. Pornography can change you, to oh my change God. your wiring. Oh, it's totally fucking up entire reality. generations of men, particularly of men. Women too, but young men are getting... Like super fucked up. By and what chance? Right yeah, what chance? What chance? What chance? I, I, I do think we'll see. Uh, humanity will adapt. You know, it's it's like a, it's a psychological way of like life finds a way. Meaning, we'll Maybe. either start seeing kids that start being like, "This isn't, this isn't how it's supposed to be," or meteorites and we start over. But yeah. something's gonna, yeah. <laughs> something's gonna happen. Some, I mean, I as much as I want every, as much as I want all of us to actually get to this kill screen and like really all figure out how to love our love nice. each other king of kong reference yeah well or pac-man or or yeah oh, but you, oh king you, of kong the, the documentary for certain i was gonna yeah. say that's where most of us yeah, learned about yeah, kill yeah, screens yeah, you yeah, get yeah. into kill screens bro oh no not before no please <laughs> i was never that good at these fucking arcade games um <laughs> but yeah i mean as much as i want us to get to that place there is definitely a part of me that's like yeah maybe a meteor is just what we need i don't know I don't know. It's it's just so sad because we're I, we're I, just but so I think, fucked right now. I don't think we get anywhere by not by being unfucked though. Like going for utopia. This is this is the hard truth of of spiritual enlightenment, nirvana, like Jesus saying the poor will always be amongst you. Mm. It's like fixing the world. I'm not saying we don't do it, but the reason we do it it's like Father Greg uh says about homeboy industries. He's like it's like, are you helping them? He's like, they're helping me. In loving ex-gang members and helping them, he's learning to love and forgive and help himself yeah. because there's another game being played. Meaning, I don't know if every single ego is going to be like, oh, what have I been doing? And it's going to be like, it's a wonderful life. And we have an... I, I, but I, I know it, I know I, it sounds I very I think there's a way to pull naive. the plug on the whole thing, though. That, that Maybe I'm even more naive, meaning... If we wake up, we'll pull the. We won't fix every problem, but we can re remember, remember, and and go home. But I. But while we're here, just to agree with you, yeah, hand out some PB and Js and 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 help and fix and reform and and protest and all that. I'm not saying not. Uh, I would never say don't do anything. Oh, what? But I, I think there's another game going, and so, I don't think the game is sweep the streets. I. I, I it's not, I don't want it to be. Yeah. I don't want it to be. I I I I want 
I I want us to start waking up to actual love. I mean, genuine. I mean, that's yeah. that that's the book. I mean, and and that's all. I mean, the book is about my mental, my own personal mental health journey, and kind of you know slightly memoirish in that we I talk about the various things that brought me to that created most all the trauma in my life and brought me to my knees and all this therapy that I went to. But at the end of it all, what I learned, one of the biggest lessons I learned was that I didn't love myself. Mm. And if we don't love ourselves, we can't really love other people as much as we think that we might be. It's not, it's not a real whole healthy love. That is a version of love. But if we can really get every problem that we have in this world, man, if you trace it upstream, Every single problem, every single thing that we're all, that they're all these NGOs, all these nonprofits are all trying to separately fix. If we actually went upstream, the problem is all right here. It's somebody's broken head and broken heart. That's what it is. Love or a lack of it. Yeah. That's what Mr. Rogers yes. said. Yes. That's what Mr. Rogers said? Yeah. He said every problem is lo is solved by love or caused by a lack of it. Oh, man. Yeah. That, that guy was so... He was CGI. I knew it! <laughs> What? Nobody can be that perfect. We can't get into it quickly. And the way he fed those fish was so suspect. It was the same every time. Watch a supercut. Watch, it. <laughs> Watch a supercut. It was ones and zeros. Fred oh Rogers God. was CGI. You heard it here first. Man, Bert I saw that documentary. I cried my eyes out. I cried. He was just such a beautiful, wonderful human being and a soul and like was so ahead of mm. understanding where all of this shit was going. Like just literally, like I love that he had that episode where he just sits there. And he goes, we're going to learn what one minute feels like. And he just sets the clock there and he turns it on. And he just sits in silence for one minute, slowing kids' minds back down again. Yeah. Just to be, again, to be here, right. not needing the next stimuli, not needing the next thing. So right. that they, And going back to your kid, uh, it's one of the craziest, like every single kid, how fast do they get over one toy? Yeah. By the way, you see it in dogs too. I mean, it's not even like, it's a very just animal, like a thing in us. It's a part of the ego and survival. No, it is. It's, you get the thing, you get the dopamine. Oh my God, I got the new thing. Well, if we were designed to be satisfied, we'd be dead. Because our ancestors, I mean, real early, I'm going to say it, Homo erectus. <laughs> Homo erectus is running around all erect and he finds some raspberries and if he was like, I'm good, he'd lay down there and he'd die. He's got he's to learn to store and, and, and predict. Sure, sure. And all of that sort of stuff. So it's, I, I think it's all milkshake, right? So a milkshake tastes good and you want another milkshake because y your human animal is just not used to getting that much, much sugar, sugar yeah, and yeah. fat. Yeah. And sugar and fat, by the way, we can poo-poo them all day, but they keep you alive. If yeah. you and I, and I hope one day this happens, are in a post-apocalyptic future, but at least it's us. <laughs> and we're walking around and we have machetes and there's kind of like Come that ashy machetes. snow. It looks like snow. It's not snow. You can tell it's like it's like St. Louis. It's, it's, falling, it's falling on it. Yeah, it's fallout. <laughs> and we're walking around. If you find a milkshake, that's the best fucking thing that could happen. For sure. It'll keep you alive. Yeah. So, but we're living in a world of infinite milkshakes and it's the same with infinite toys, yeah. infinite yep. entertainment. Yep. Yep. But it's all, yep. there's nothing inherently wrong with the software that tells you eat sugar and fat. It's just that culture has uh, evolved past the human animal. Yes, because the salesman, the sales of it all, the marketing of it all has now tapped into and hijacked what that survival mechanism is. That is, by the way, dopamine. We, they have these, they've done these incredible studies. They, they took a rat and they disabled its ability to create dopamine. Everything else was totally normal and fine. Chill, 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 chill. <laughs> they chill, set the rat, chill day they for the set rat. the rat down. Something's different. They put a bowl of food next to the rat and the rat starved to death. No matter how much pain, no matter how much anguish it was going in as it was literally starving to death, mm. the only reason why you would get up to go and do the motivator, the, 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 the motivator, the reward hormone is this dopamine. And we, like you said, it, we needed it to survive yeah. because why the fuck else would we run 10 miles or more every day to go hunt and gather? Why would we do that? Nike, just do it. Just, <laughs> just. answer it. Boop. Nike, just, <laughs> Nike do, just it. do it. And it, I'm correct. Um, I can't no. believe that's correct. <laughs> uh, no, I'm sorry. It's, it's, it's a no. Tits now. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll take anal bum covers for a thousand. Le tits um, now. Le tits now. But but that, it's all tied to that dopamine. So that's why that's why we needed it. We need that yes. thing to tell us to know. In order to survive, you need to get up and go do more. You need more. 
But you don't need more of all this other shit, which is what's ta- it's hijacking. It's literally well, hijacking. This is something the we talk about a lot, and I bet you're going to have a great a- a- answer to this. Not to put there's zero pressure, but like one of the big things I'm going to two things that have changed my life. Uh, one is if you sort of feel like doing the hard thing, that's as good as it gets. Mm. Meaning, if you sort of feel like mm. Val and I were talking mm-hmm. about that last night, I just had a very inactive day, and I sort of felt like uh, walking on the treadmill, which is my exercise. I yeah, like, yeah. I sound like an old man. I walk on the treadmill. <laughs> and then I walked on the treadmill for at least Look, 30 minutes. The incline's great. five, baby. Come on. <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, and I was like, we say it, Val and I say it all the time. We go, a, a, if a little bit is as good as it gets. Yeah. We said, if you want to write, yeah. a little feeling yeah. is as good as it gets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Work, answer emails, whatever it might sure. be, exercise, yep. a little bit is a good. That yeah. number one. Number two is, Try to get addicted, meaning try to associate your dopamine, your motivating thing, with good things. Yeah. So I'm curious about your mental health journey. And uh, look, I, I don't mean to put you in a hole, but you seem like a, a well-defined, healthy person. So I'm interested, what are some of the things that you did when you were struggling with your mental health that got you to the literal superhero? I think Shazam's, <clears throat> I think Shazam's a documentary. The literal <laughs> superhero... But you know what I mean? Tell me. Well, tell I mean, honestly, the biggest thing. Give the people thing, the, some help. The, 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 biggest thing, <laughs> the biggest thing was learning that I did not love myself. And I had no idea that I didn't love myself. I had no idea. I just assumed, you know, I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't feel like I was ever actively hating myself or, or disliking myself. Uh, so I thought, well, clearly I love myself, but I, I didn't. Well, how I, did you find out? Well, you know, one of the, one of the breakthroughs was um, talking to, my, you know, uh, uh, therapists and them asking me, um, you know, how do you talk to yourself with all, you know, everything, all the darkness that I was going through in that moment, or even just, you know, when I fuck up or fail or whatever, how do you talk to yourself? I'm like, I'm like I berate myself. I'm like, you fucking idiot. Like, wh- why didn't you do this right? And why didn't you do that right? And, you know, I, I, I'm very much, very critical of myself. Mm. And then one of them said, I mean, so simply, they said, would you talk that way to anybody outside of you that you love? Mm. I said, well, of course not. Oh, my God. <laughs> Wait, do that again, and, and I'll be Enya. <laughs> do it again. You'll be who? Enya. Oh, okay. <laughs> so sad. <sexy. laughs> Will you talk to anybody like that outside of yourself, you know, that you love? And I'd be like, well, of course not. Who can say where the wind blows <laughs> and the children go? <laughs> Only, Only time. time. Dude. Dude, Enya's got bangers, bro. You know that, who loves that Enya? Album particularly. You know who loves Enya? Who? Eckhart Tolle. Uh, that actually doesn't surprise me at all. I went I thought you were going to say something like... And he was like, let's listen to some like music. Like Jocko Willings or something no. like that. Like, loves Enya. Like, of course Eckhart loves Enya. That's what I'm saying. If you get to the... If you pull the plug on the bath and you're there, if you're home, yeah. <laughs> Enya's what it sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, but that... So that, so that's that, a was, a, that was a big eye-opening moment. Yeah. And, then, and then just other, you know, other things that you... And again, this is why therapy is a wonderful, beautiful thing that everybody needs to do because we we as much as we like to believe that we see ourselves entirely do fucking not we do not see ourselves we see parts of ourselves the parts that we see of ourselves are also very biased and subjective to just the way we happen to view the world and that's why we need people around us you know that iron sharpening iron that those people that hold you accountable that are that mirror it's also referenced in the movie king of kong is you, it really you just yeah he goes as iron it says in his proverbs iron sharpens iron oh i don't remember that yeah. in there you love the um, movie king of kong and why a, and why a therapist a licensed you know professional therapist is so great because they get to be a really hopefully intelligent uh uh, uh learned um, mirror that is unbiased, that it that has no vested interest in whatever your healing path is going to be, other than you just have a better understanding of who you are and how the world works and how you fit into all of that, right? Mm. So the more I was able to just kind of get little bits and bobs, more of those mirrors, more of even people around me and being able to kind of dig deeper into that, that was a huge part of, and by the way, and also has become part of a thing that I'm addicted to. I am addicted to talking about, not my self love, but self, but love in general. That's I can't. That's what we just said. Stop. Good addiction. Yes, exactly. Exactly. This is going yeah, back to yeah. to your point, which is so that that really helped me. Working out, you know, there's there's no ifs ands about it, but you know, you're when you go and actually use this meat bag, 
as designed, because we have not evolutionarily passed beyond that, we're still very much physiologically hunter-gatherers. Yeah. If we are not using our body in a manner that's similar to that, yeah. we are, our body's going to be unhappy. So you want to move. You need to move. we got to go and do these things. Um, you will incline be happier. Incline five is, is, a, is a respectable incline at a 4.2. It's not bad. It's not bad. Steady state cardio. By the way, that's a great way for anybody to just start doing some shit because it'll get your heart rate up to the point where well, you're Well, that's really why I'm doing it. I'm not trying to like break a record. I'm no. trying to elevate my heart for exactly. 30 minutes. Exactly. That's it. Exactly. The and end. that's good. Yeah. It's good for you. Yeah. It's it's base level. Like at least just go do that for your heart, for your body to get things moving, for your anxiety. to get that dopamine for your anxiety, all that stuff. Yeah. My treadmill used to be here and there's a poster that says, let your body solve what your brain can. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Isn't that I nice? love that Rom's there too. There he is. God, man, he's, he's so good. People he's think so that's good. Alan Alda, but the, <laughs> 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 I like that you, you knew that was... You can't um, see, but Ram does is on the wall. But yeah, man, you know, listen, I mean, getting, a, I, I think, uh, really get addicted to loving yourself. And it's hard because if you don't start with loving yourself, if you don't start with loving yourself, it's a very difficult thing to get addicted to. But in the same way, if you've never worked out before, it's really hard to get into the groove of working out until you're working out enough where all of a sudden it's not so hard. And it's actually, you start to, crave it you yeah. start to get that addiction you're like man i want those endorphins i feel good in the morning if i get up and i do that thing i just feel better in my day yeah getting better sleep is a part of loving yourself yeah. spending time in deep thought meditative prayer whatever that is spending time in that being with yourself not needing to i was constantly distracting myself with because i was running from you know um uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the Enneagram at all, but I'm, uh, oh, oh, am I? But like, by the way, I'm, <laughs> I, 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 yeah, but so uh, as a as a hardcore Enneagram 7, I was, and, and by the way, Richard Rohr, his Enneagram book is fantastic, a, a Christian perspective, but very much taps into, yes, I'm, you know, as a 7, I'm an enthusiast and I want to do all this stuff, but really I'm just running from pain. And I was running from pain my whole life. I did not want to feel that pain. And so I would go and distract myself with friends and hanging out and parties and things and substances and sex and whatever things by the way some of these things that i still will occasionally go and distract myself with that yeah. i still enjoy that i still will go but but i have gotten way better at recognizing that oh no 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 this is me going for the cheaper version. This is me running from the pain as opposed to actually being present and enjoying whatever that particular thing is. And you got to get addicted to the you got to get addicted to the healthy man. I mean, that's that's yeah. what you got to do. Yeah, yeah. You're uh, the way Richard would say your sin is denial. The seven is denial. The well, the need to avoid pain. Right. What, what is is what he like? It's one of the things I loved about his particular book was, you know, if you read like the Riso Hudson, the, the wisdom of the Enneagram, it's got the typical, you know, the reformer, the enthusiast, the you know, whatever, all, all those, the challenger which I think are very good kind of placeholder names for these categories of, of personality. But in, in Richard's book, he didn't call them any of those things. It was like the need to control, the need to not be controlled, the need to avoid pain. It's all these deep needs in us. Mm -hmm. And for the seven, it was the need to avoid pain at mm -hmm. all costs. And that's why gluttony. And I also love that he attached like one of the seven deadly sins. And then like, there's the two extra that are kind of, you know, kind of attached to that. Yeah, I could have sworn one of yours was denial. Well, but it, gluttony is certainly one. Gluttony Gluttony yeah. is, yeah, and that's where you, because and if you're trying is, to avoid uh, pain, yeah. you're going to just be fucking, oh, I want to do all the things. I want it all. I want to feel good all the time. Right, right, right. right. Yours, what, what are you on the, on the? I'm a three. I'm split exactly between a three and a four, but I think oh. I'm a three wing four. So I'm yeah, an yeah, achiever. Yeah. yeah. And deceit is my sin. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, interesting. So. In order to achieve. Yeah, yeah, to yeah, morph yeah. and, and yeah. be who people want me to yeah. be so I can like sneak in and eat your donuts, basically. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, was yeah. wondering who ate my donuts. I'm a Mormon oh, and I get it. And I'm, I'm at the Mormon party eating their pizza. <laughs> but that's not even it. That's just that that that's just a thief. Um <laughs> A lot of my uh, friend Richard thinks this is such a fun thing to say. He always thinks I'm a seven, and I'm like, I'm a seven for you. You should see yeah. me around other people. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and I'm a seven on this podcast. Sure. Like I, in, I invoke. Yeah. Seven well, because is, you're is enjoying yourself, number. you're doing something that you. Well, that I'm also actually, enthusiastic for you, but the sure. rest of the day uh, I won't be. You're this. just a downer. I'm a real just downer. A wet blanket. <laughs> Although the four in me loves, um, it's not moping, but. Val and I talk a lot about our feelings, and that really works for me. She's a nine, mm. which is if oh peacemaker. I mean, she's like yeah, yeah she's, she's just wanting. To, oh, she's yeah. a beach community, yeah, which is great. But a <laughs> she's nine, she's a beach community. 
a nine in health oh is God. a three. So the more Val is in our relationship, which is a very safe yeah, and loving relationship, yeah. she starts teaching classes. She starts doing all these things that she just needed to feel extra safe. And then she could become a three. And a three, I don't know if it's in health. I think it is in health, becomes a nine. So I go towards her and she goes towards me. Oh, interesting. Yeah, threes and nines are good for each I other. I think a seven becomes a five in health, but I'm not, I can't even remember really what a five challenger. No, no, that's the eight. Oh, I'm sorry. It's the the five is it, the investigator or something? Yes, the investigator. But I, I, yeah, I'm not really... I always take that as challenging. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? the, oh, the, that's funny. The five is the one that's like, <clears throat> like uh, Michael Gunger's a five, and I explained to him all that core stuff, and he had a lot more questions, and I was like, it's not annoying, but I'm like, this is very five. Yeah. This Whereas is very, a seven. Michael, this is very five. I would rather talk to a seven because a seven is like, oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And, sure. the, and they'll find yeah. where they relate. Yeah. And you get farther. I'm not saying you need the five, but you get farther with a seven. And I like going, like seeing how far we can go. And then looking behind us and going like, and then well, I don't know, that yeah. turn was a little goofy or whatever, but let's go. Yeah. Let's take it all the way. Let's go there. All the way. Yeah. yeah. I, in, 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 in unhealth, sevens become ones. And in health, ones become sevens, which is really interesting. Like my sister is a hardcore one. And every time she was like the really healthy and like not stressed out, we would really be getting along because she wanted to have more fun. Yeah. And anytime I would be devolving into like the more oneness because I've been having too much fun. And now I got to like really put some brakes on it. I got to put some, you know, I got to put some order to this and everything has to have its place and whatever. Otherwise I'm like stressing. We would kind of relate on that level. It was a very strange kind of teeter totter in that. But anyway- you got a, you're a very fast, are you feeling the magic mind? This isn't product placement. Do, do you feel? <laughs> I mean, I guess kind of. I, because I, I'm I, pretty, I'm pretty that's this what I level say. always. I feel like you're yeah. this way all the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm listening to you talking. I'm like, this is, a, this is a half speed episode. <laughs> And I'm like, that's why when I gave you the magic mind, I was like, I don't, I don't think you need it. I don't even know it. if he needs it. Yeah, you're. Are well, you taking no. any brain supplements, or are you just this way? Uh, no, I take some nootropics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I take um, uh, on it. Um, Alpha Brain. Alpha Brain. Another yeah. sponsor. There you go. Mm -hmm. yeah. Onnit.com. Yeah. Uh, but uh, what about your DHA? So subtly dropped. Up. I know. After we, I, I, I don't. I guess it's out of fear that other people call bullshit on me, but I'm calling bullshit on myself. I'm also a product of. of no, no, no. But, 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 but here's the, here's the thing. Here's the thing. That's one of the, 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 the yeah yeah but but I, I I guess what I'm what I'm saying is that I know you're not feeling judged by me I'm yeah. just saying it, 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 that is a, a totally natural thing to feel obviously when you are awake to all of the shit that's going on right and yet we have to be able to give ourselves the grace to be a, but this is the way the system is built what, and buddy, how the fuck else do we get these words out if not through kind of playing the same system it's similar to what you said about meat you're like this is the best way for your body to get protein and of course anyone with any empathy could understand animal rights, right? Sure. So we're all in the same. We're all in but it. the reason I, I circled back to that is I'm like, we're all, like you said, doing the best we can, doing the best we can. in a very flawed, flawed meaning imperfect. Yeah, yeah. You can't take a breath in without killing microbes and all these different things. Like, well, death, I mean, and even death, like death, and, and even going to, you know, um, because because you know we we swung back around on it, but you know l l just to the food of it all, you've got animal food, you've got you know food food that are animals and food that is plant, right? Yeah. And you got people that are very adamant, like I'm adamant vegans. I am. I do not want any animal to die for my survival. Okay. Right. Yeah. Here's the dilemma: in order to grow all the food that you need to eat as a vegetarian or vegan, you have to plow all these fields that is killing hundreds if not thousands of smaller animals little oh, interesting. mice and squirrels and oh i've never and, heard that yeah oh bro yeah you have to make peace with the the brutality it, it, and it's not easy and <laughs> yeah, by the way more and more than that just for what it's worth science is more and more science is coming out and data is coming out that the feel. plants are fucking very sentient. Yeah, just, they communicate, they understand yeah. shit. They have, they, they hear when the, there, there are plants that if you just play the sound of like grasshoppers eating them, they start to change their biochemistry wow. because they think they're being eaten. Like, which means they're aware. I feel that way at Thanksgiving was the riff. Hot riff. <laughs> like I, you play audio of my parents arguing. I just, oh. I, I'll, <laughs> 
I'll just start to. <laughs> I was like, shrink. are Thanksgiving people are eating you? Wow, this is a weird family. But this is why we need uh, stories, mythologies, ways of understanding that life feeds on death, and that's okay, and even even if it's the death of of plants and, sure, and all the like, sure and grace with each other. If you are like, if you want to be an Adam vegan then do that if that's what you feel called to your conscience. But recognize that it's not as black and white as you want it to be. It's not right. as cut and dry morality as you want it to be. Right. And therefore have grace with someone else who's a hardcore carnivore. Understand that, yes, they might be doing this, but, but they that, might be killing one animal at a time. Right, we're, like, ba we're back to the joy of scapegoating. And I've, I fall into this too. And Ramdas, if he ever felt himself being, towards the end of his life, he did eat chicken. I saw him do it. <laughs> but he would, he tells the story of he felt himself feeling too righteous that mm. he didn't eat meat. Yeah. So he went to a Chinese restaurant and ate spare ribs. And he was in his, like, his basically his gown. And yeah. his businessman comes up to him and was feeling Ramdas's vibrations. And, you know, it's the 70s and he just looks like this groovy guy. And the businessman opens up to him and he's a big heavy guy. And he's like, I, I just need to get it together. You seem so together. What do you eat? And on the plate in front of Ramdas were all these pig bones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's it. You, if you're humble, you'll never stumble. Yes. Like is is Richard, uh, not Richard, his father, Greg Boyle, it says that in his books and it's something that I, yeah. I try to remember before I go on stage because sometimes when I ignite my ego, I get a yeah. little too big, a little too entitled. Uh, it's what we're saying. Yeah. It's like I do try to avoid animal products, but if it starts to get to the point where I then judge you, the devil came in the back door. Yeah. I kicked him out the front saying, stop murdering animals. Yeah. Then he came in the back and he made me hate you. Yeah. So I don't believe in the suffering of animals, including you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's great, it's great. I mean, the, the ways in which it becomes so strangely counterintuitive this in is so many ways. But, but to your point, humility. Humility, gratitude, and trust. Yes. These three things, if we can practice them on a more regular level, and again, that might, you know, to, to those who are atheists, it's trust in whatever the design that's going on is. This thing that is yeah. happening that we have no control over. And if you're of the of the theist category, trusting that in that same design, but that there might be something behind orchestrating whatever that is, but knowing that we don't know fucking anything. So you gotta Humble, yeah. you gotta step into that trust, and obviously you gotta step into gratitude. That's also, scientifically proven, and the humility is the thing that we all need more of because we don't again know fucking anything. Yeah, there is a real hubris in even believing that God is mad at you or that that mm. He's going to kick you into yeah. a furnace. There's a narcissism yes. to that, and there's a, also a I know how these things work. Yeah. So there's a peace in going. I don't know, yeah. but I'm a part of it. And I would say your being a part of this is a clue that you are not an error, that you're not a mistake, that you belong, yeah. and that you're a part of a thing that in its own weird way is looking out for itself and is dignified in its own way, and, and, and you belong, is yeah. basically what I would say. I, I completely agree. And in that, that I think gives us all the encouragement to love more. Yeah. Because it's it's getting it's humbling oneself to get to that to that point of recognizing that I am this infinitely small speck of sand that is a part of this infinitely large mosaic that is comprised of these infinitely small specks of sand. Right. Which means you have this value. This mosaic only exists with you as a part of it. That's right. But also, you're unimportant. <laughs> You are just this little bit of what all of this shit is. Right. And that humility then should lead to, oh, and therefore so are they, and so are they, and so is everybody else, and so is everything. Well, that's pulling the plug on the on the on the tub to use the metaphor I've only used in this one. But that's waking up, is recognizing that you are me and I am you, and this mm. is this, and it's all it's all one. So to your speck of sand thing, mm. I would add it's it's the paradox that you are I, I'm hesitant to say unimportant, but like it, your story isn't the point. Okay, let's say unimportant. Just, I, 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 I know no, unimportant I'm, I'm, is it? Yeah, is, I'm is, with you. is where we're. But that's why I say infinitely valuable. But because also I think we animated are, by the can, same thing that birthed the cosmos. Sure. So infinitely important and unimportant. I'll yes. give you unimportant if you give me 
couldn't be more important. Well, that's why I say but it's not. But that's ego. why I say valuable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I say. Valuable. Oh, I like that. Infinitely valuable. Me and for we are because again, I mean, I, I believe life is the only real value. It's the only real miracle. It's the only real thing that is like, what the fuck is this? How does this even exist? We can explain almost everything else. We cannot explain this thing that's still this incredible big mystery, right? But it's insane and so valuable. And moreover, you have an infinite possibility from when you're a child, basically. I mean, granted, there are certain physicalities that you're not going to be. I'm not gonna, neither of us were gonna be a center for the Lakers. That was just not in our genes, right? We were close. We're so close. <laughs> but you still have the ability to kind of go this infinite amount of different directions once you're brought into this world. If you decide to go this way, you can go that way and you can go this way and you can be of service in so many different ways yes. to this world. Yes. So you have like this almost infinite value, but also the world doesn't fucking need you. Mm. And Or if you're a theist, God doesn't need you. God will use whoever God wants to use. You think, oh, well, I'm so special that I did this thing. It's like, yeah, but somebody else could have done it. Somebody else would have done it. You just happened to do it. You should be grateful that you happened to be used in that way at that time. But that doesn't actually make you important. Because That's why, uh, see, the, the different way that I would frame it is whatever sure. you do or don't do, your value doesn't increase or decrease. Sure. Because you were born perfect and you'll, you'll quote unquote die perfect. Sure. Like, and nothing's happening anyway. <laughs> and nothing's is, happening anyway. This yeah. is why I love the dream things. Don't get too caught up on what you do or don't do in the dream. Realize that... Uh, you're a part of God's mind or, 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 yeah. or, or however else you want to put that. Yeah. Here's why, because that gets rid of guilt and fear and, and all of, all of his horrible stuff. And then and you can, shame. and shame. shame. Yeah. Shame. So, but you know, I found, I find that with father Greg, I found that with Richard. I found that with Ramdas. These are interesting cats because they, they don't talk shit. So how do you bounce off each other? Yeah. I'm not saying they're not bo they're boring. You can have conversations, yeah. but like these are people that are really embodying an aspect of God that I think goes back to what we were saying earlier can be kind of uh, hard. Meaning they love, and you can't do anything to make them love you more. I remember I told Richard Roar I was going to name if we had a son I was going to name him Roar. He didn't say anything, and I was like, that's a guy who understands that if he believes in the myth of specialness, he's going to be a little bit further from the truth. Yeah. So he just he smiled, but oh, he man. wasn't like, oh God, like what I would do. Yeah, yeah. And it's interesting. These these people, that's what I mean. They're not really here. They're here, but they're not here. <laughs> but they are incredible examples of what we all, I think, should be trying to walk toward. I agree. You know? And the reason, but why don't we? It's because I think we vanish along the way. Yes. That's I, the I, fear. I, I don't disagree. Yeah. I, I don't disagree. Yeah. The ego is terrified of that. That's, the that's, ego that's, is terrified of that because yeah. that is antithetical to survival. If we go. are feeling ourselves not being here individually, yep. that Separate. feels like dying. Yes. That is, but that is death to the ego, right? That's that what, is, And that's what they're all, that's why the dark night of the soul is when you realize that spiritual paths aren't to make you happier and more prosperous. There's something much more frightening to the ego. Yeah. That, that's why St. John of the Cross has those moments where like, fuck, I, nothing's even up here with me. And then just one click further, you go, and it's all Ben and Jerry's, baby. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's start. Uh, let's this start episode brought to you by Ben and Jerry's. Uh, ben and Jerry's. Ben and Jerry's. Weird. Com slash weird. I know I do try to avoid animal products, but those cows should be very happy that they're they're making us so fat. <laughs> Can I say that? I mean, I, I, I just said it. You know what? It was just a comedy routine. Um, thank you, Chuck Tangled. <laughs> Shazam. This is, this is when the resume gets Broadway, dropped. <laughs> Broadway, Tony, acting hiatus. Uh, get addicted to loving yourself. That'll be the quote. Get yeah. addicted yeah. to loving yourself. We Amen. want to die. Amen. Acting at six. Uh, who cares? If if every guest came like you, you, you know what? I say this often, but Conan said when Martin Short does his show, he calls it a day off. Zach Levi, you're a day off. And that is, that's a real gift. Brother, I, well, I have so much love and respect for you, honestly. Oh, and thanks, I've man. followed you for many years. And I love what you do on this show. And I love what you do with your comedy. But I, particularly, I like that you get into these really deep, interesting conversations. And yeah. you want to unpack. You want to get into it. Because so many people don't. 
And it's like, guys, there's so much more. There's yeah. so much more depth that we can be getting into. And I love that you are a forum for that. And and you are a forum for that. You're not just a platform for other people to do that. You yourself have a deep desire to want to do that. And I fucking love it. Oh, thanks, so thank you. Man. You are a seven and I love it. <laughs> I love it. But um, you are doing the same thing. And what a delight. I, I really... I just had a feeling it was going to be a great one. And I didn't do, I did so little, I just seen so much of your work anyway. I wasn't worried about that. But I wish they could all be California girls. I wish hey, they could all be like this. Well, and, so this is, and this is exactly why, you know, for anybody who, who's watching or listening, you know, we've been trying to make this happen for, for years. years for literally camp. years, yeah. And, but I was always adamant and you, were, and you were kind of with me on it. It's like, if we can make it happen in person, let's make it happen in person because this is a way I more agree. interesting way to have conversations You're like too, sp sp pre not to say that the guests that do it over Zoom aren't precious, but I was like, I had a feeling. It's I'm not the precious. words, it's this. You're precious. My precious. My precious. <laughs> I'm going never push myself <laughs> Oh, okay. Uh, well, thank you. Would you please grace us yes. with a keep it crispy? Hey, guys. I'm going to need you to keep it crispy. <laughs> you you sounded like Affleck in there. <laughs> You're in the DC universe <laughs> twice. <Hey. laughs> you are. Thanks for letting me um, come and make it weird. I you made it wonderful and weird. Yeah. Preach. Preach. Preach you. Peace out. Thanks, everybody. You made it weird. You made it weird.